Hello again, everybody. We're back on in the loser side. We've got Steve Saxon playing Matty Bolton here. The other game that's going to start shortly is um, Ben Foster v Ron Kelly, and then at one o'clock we will have Luke Foster v Clint Kapler. Both still have a double chance. Winner of that will go straight into the grand final with a double chance. But we'll concentrate on this game right now. Sacco and Bolts. Saka going for the pot out early here on yellows. I think I have Lee, Lee Thayer coming back to be my commentary partner in a sec. That'll be good, we can rip into each other. held the white there for this bottom yellow. This will be the big shot to try and um, get position, get the white up the other end of the table for the top yellow. And Ben Foster and Ron Kelly have just started on, on the other live stream match. Sacco's played that well. That's a good shot. He's played that well too, I think. He's got that black. Should be 1 0 Sacco. And it is one no circle. Well done, Steve. Ron on yellows. First frame against Ben. The winner of these two play each other, and then the winner of that will play the loser of Clint, Clint and Luke. Just got informed that Clint Catwell and Luke Foster's. Uh, Semi final match is starting at quarter to one now. Both have the double chance still, so that's a race to 11 still. Quarter to one start. We also have a ladies' money match happening today a hundred dollar match between Susie Gibbs and Jess Risk. I think that starts this afternoon as well. <laughs> the 
That's a good shot by Ron. I think Ron's fired up for this. Oh, sorry, by Ben. I think Ben's fired up for this. Everyone likes to beat Ron Kelly, that's for sure. Snooping there by Ben. It's quite easy to get out of, but he's tied up as up runs other yellow now, even if he goes up and down and pots a yellow over the pocket, he's tied up runs other yellow. And here's my um, partner Lee Thera with me now. Morning John. Oh morning Lee, good to see you. I was okay until you sat here. Why Ron hasn't really left Ben much. How was your evening last night, John? Yeah, my evening was okay. I stayed here commentating because you left and um, then went to the hotel and had a good sleep. I had had to go home. I had better offers. Well, better offer. Off. Elaborate? Uh, no, this is a. Uh, children are still awake, mate. <laughs> Get back to the game. There's a game on. That's a good shot there, by Ben. Really looking forward to this match. I think Ben, one of the the real young guns in the state, up against Ron, who, whilst only being young himself, is a uh, well, one had of the older heads. With me this morning, we were, um, as in we, I mean me, was giving him a lot of shit for being 33 years old. Probably one of the oldest in the competition. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but look at that baby face. 33 going on 13 though, isn't he? Yeah, still hasn't started shaving yet. Did you see the games before this, Lee? I, I was on the drive from Perth, but I, I managed to watch some when I arrived. and. Sacco got a 7-0 jump on Dicko. And um, Dicko got a few back, but there was, he was too far behind. Sacco got a 9-3. Yeah, I saw, I saw, saw Nathan fell a bit short in his, in his battle oh, with Ben. Nathan, that was Nathan a good game. Nathan should have made it 8-all. He missed, a, missed an easy, easy shot in the middle to, that would have made it 8-all. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been outside kicking himself ever since, I think. I did see him um, smashing his head into a wall there pretty hard. I just said morning Nathan and walked past. <laughs> Pot there by Ben. Just wants to judge this kiss off the second red and should be out from here. Oh. Wiped his feet before it went in. Generous pocket. Just needs to make sure he runs past the yellow and doesn't snooker himself here. If he can come back far enough, leave himself the angle to drop him for the black. Definitely ben too Foster far. has snookered himself on his left red here. Needed to come needed to come about another six inches at least. I actually think he was trying to hold for the red in that bottom pocket. I don't oh know dear. if he was trying to come back past yeah. It could be wrong. Often happens. Yeah, it does. You're wrong more often than you're rightly.
Ron looks like he's itching to get at this table. He wants Ben to give him a chance here. Ben's got out the snooker there, only giving away one shot. Um, but let's see, Ron, Ron's probably in the box seat now that he's at the table. He's got one relatively hard yellow, but. He hit the red, he's only got one shot. I'd say Ron's still in the box seat, but Ron's in the box seat now. He tried to get the snooker there, didn't get it, but I don't think he can um, do much with this red. Then I'm pretty sure we said that about his brother with that black last night. And <laughs> look where that ended up. Yeah, we spoke about that a few times this morning. Yeah, I was uh, watching the replays on on my way here in the in the car. Nice. Giving Ron two shots here, and big opportunity to take the opening frame. Was it two shots to Ron? Yeah, put the ball over the hole there where the white is. On purpose? No. last night though, so he'll be raring to go. Still fancy him to pot this and come back up for the other ball. I think he missed that on purpose. Yeah. by Ben, he's come all the way down so he can go for the double one to the middle, it's a cracking shot really. He's certainly going to have a go at it. It's not ideal going for a double on the black but doesn't have much choice here. He'll back himself to get it. Looks he's nailed like he's it. Got it. Cracking double, well done Ben, 1-0. was on the black here, Matt Bolton's at the table, he's on reds. Matt Bolton in a bit of trouble here, right? Don't think he can pop. Can you pop that red in the middle? Yeah, maybe. Did he get the snooker? No, I think he's... Looks like he can get past it here. Looks Don't know like whether he's got the potting angle, but... He was unlucky. You just need another ball, though. Ball roll on it, who'd have it? Saxon going for a 2 0. That's a good pop, well done. 2 0, Steve Saxon. He's more warmed up than Matt because he's played a match already today. Yeah, it, 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 does, it does make a difference having that, that extra game play. You can have practice all you like in the morning, but then Matt's played enough frames for the weekend, so. I'm sure he would be using that as an than excuse. we'll ever play in our lifetime, probably. Yeah. Ron taking a bit of a sit down during the play here. Doesn't he know there's like a match that. on? He's lazy like that, Ron. Kerry's going to tell him to get off the table in a minute. Do 
early morning stretch, he's getting his body going. Yeah, tucking the front of his shirt and showing off his very feminine belt, what he's wearing. Better not mention that too much. I think he might be wearing his wife's belt. I think Cindy might actually be at home watch, uh, watching, to, watching this. I'm, so. I'm pretty sure Ron's wearing his wife's belt. <laughs> Is that all he's wearing in the <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying out of this one, John. I'm going to get back to the game, and Ron's got, got a good chance here. All his balls are out in the open. There's a few there, but there's not a whole lot blocking them, so... Yeah, Ron's wife's just rang up and asked for her belt back. <laughs> I think I'll be back and Ron to put out from here. What do you reckon, Lee? Yeah, so there's, there's not too many obstacles, he just needs to land well on the, the two reds close to that right hand pocket. But I think he can pop I this one and cut that other I one. I reckon even you'd pop it from here, Lee. I would have on Friday night. Let's not reminisce. Hold it enough to get me over the line. But How is my money going for you anyway? Still, still burning a hole in the pocket, John. Yeah. to kiss that yellow right there. Life has just got harder in one shot for Ron Kelly. Reckon he'll just come across and play the red in the same pocket he's playing this red into? I think he will just... It'll be a hard, hard shot, but hard pot for If he puts some left hand side, Do suck it, it over. But Ron Kelly can put a lot of side on a ball. Oh, he said it's, it's too like hard. Too far, yeah. He said it's far too hard. I think he that, maybe that shot cut the ball on. a little bit thinner than what he was trying to... Shot's not on anymore. He hasn't got much of a shot on, to be honest, does he? Yeah, um... Certainly, just, sure what just maybe here. come off the, the rail nearest the red and try and kick it over towards that, that pocket, in or over. Wait, hit Tough the, shot. Hit the, hit the red up the table and... Nestle the white onto the yellow. You know what I mean? He definitely can't pot this. I'll, I'll say you'll, he you'll could hit just, the white yeah, off the left off rail and, and try and nestle the white onto the yellow that's in front of the red. Yeah, he's just he won't be happy with himself about that position. No, yeah, I said he's going to have a go off the. He's having a go at the pot here. This uh, like he's turned into a hero, I guess. This will be a huge shot if he gets this. He's going to go very close. Great yeah, shot there freak. by Ron Kelly. Great shot. That's a huge shot by Ron Kelly. See, John, this is why I beat you, because that's the sort of shot I would have gone for and <laughs> might, might not have nailed it like that. But <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have went for that shot and missed the whole ball and given me two shots. Oh, what was the point in putting the red if you can't put the black? Yeah, very unrun like stroke there. Unrun like. Yeah. Uh, like normally so fluid with his with his stroke with his cue in action and he. <laughs> Can Ben punish him there? That that mistake by Ron. I can't believe Ron missed the black there to be honest. After pulling off that massive shot. Maybe he was still marvelling in his own head at what a good shot it was. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> now, of course, Ron's a very professional player is Ron. And Used to be. Maybe he's missing blacks left, right, isn't it? <laughs> he'll push that back out of his mind soon enough. and Ben's going to clear the table on him? No, I, I think he will. Think he will? Even if he gets out of position, he'll snicker behind this top wheel. There's no such thing as a dead ball for the Fosters. Nah. Nah. Gonna 
they've actually got a snooker table at home of the Foster Brothers. And they've got Kraken's here. If you get to practice on a snooker table all day at home, then it's going to put you in good stead on the pool table. Normal people have got jobs and stuff, haven't they? Yeah, well. <laughs> in and leave, it, leave the hard one? I think he'd like to be able to take the red nearest the rail. By red you mean yellow? Yeah, that's certainly what I mean. So it's an early one for me too. He's going to want to get that now, I think, but oh, he's ideally... Going way. Leaving the hard one till last. Yeah. Extra pressure on yourself. I think he had to with the angle he left himself on that yellow. I don't know if you know Lee, but it got confirmed that Steve Dukamp won the thousand dollars for the best intermediate player. Yeah, no, that's that's very good by Steve. He, he played very well and he's a, a good player. That doesn't do anything flashy, but very consistent and just polishes bugs like us off. Nice shot there by Ben. Gonna make it 2-0. Yeah, Ron's kicking himself there in the corner. Yeah, he'll be quietly having a word to himself. Well done, Ben. 2-0. 2-0. Bad blackness there by Ron. Very unlike him. We'll just flick over to Steve and Matt's game. Steve's still sitting at 2-0. Yeah, Matt's at the table. Matt's in... Matt's played a safety... Tried to play a safety shot there and hasn't got it. It's left a long pot on. Who is this Matt Bolton guy? He usually plays a safety game very well. And the draw for the Consolation Shield's just getting done right next to us. Did you just say Constellation or Consolation? Or Constipation. Constipation. <laughs> constellation is about the stars, mate. And uh, if we were stars, we wouldn't be in the Consolation Cup. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, I've been working on that one all morning. <laughs> Left the gap through the red and the black. I reckon you could probably pot that yellow. Not that, not that you can do much with other yellow. I don't actually think it'd be, nice to roll it up be to very the unfortunate to have left the potting angle as well as just been able to hit it. I'd say you can pot that. He's hit the black, there's two shots, and potted the he, white. He did pot it, you're right. He did, he but it was the, the white one. Did you notice he clipped the black on the way through? No. He, no. Clipped, he just he clipped the black with the white. So the, the angle wasn't shots, quite there to get through. So. Matty on the box seat now to take this room. Should be 2 1. <laughs> Just have Paul Dickinson come past and give me a knowing knowing wink after I backed Luke Anglesey to beat him yesterday, and he proved me wrong. So, yet Definitely again, that's me being wrong. Definitely one of the, the biggest wins of the weekend was Dick will beat an angle, I think. Angles was what, third favourite for the comp, and um, Dick will polish him off 9-5. Yeah, that was a big win I was talking to Angles. Steve Dukamp, the intermediate champion, thousand dollar winner. He's been listening to me this morning. He just com complimented me, said that I'm way better that, than Lee at commentating. Yeah, you always did talk a good game, John. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Is that 2 0 to Lee this morning? <laughs> it's looking like Friday night all over again. Yeah. Matt was a good chance here. Good shot there by Matty. Great position. He'll just drop this into the middle bag. Hopefully he doesn't put it in the middle like Nathan McMahon put his in the middle. Well done, Matt. 2 1. 
Stephen Matt are good friends. Yeah, I think there'd be quite a quite a friendly rivalry between those two, and maybe not so friendly at times. They you know, they've sort of worked together and played snooker together and things for, for quite a while. And Matt likes to tell me he's got the wood over Steve, and Steve does the same. So I don't yeah. quite know they're, they're pretty where much it's in a relationship. <laughs> them two. Yeah. I wonder who wears the pants in that one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who wears the pants. We know that Ron wears his wife's belt. And that's about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cindy, if you are listening. Yeah, we apologise that um, Ron's borrowed your belt for the day. <laughs> maybe, um, maybe opt to the skirt option this morning. <laughs> Yeah, good shot there by Brian. Brian. He's left it on for Ben. He's let Ben in again here. I think Alan Brown's just done the draw for the, the sh shield. Is this true? Have you done the draw for the shield? Have you done the draw for the shield, Brownie? Don't find out. Surprise, he missed there by Ben. I, I thought he'd, he'd pop Four that. Away if he it's only just, just off straight. Stay on the edge of the white, but he's, he's let, let run off. And Each other in the consolation shield, Lee. Sorry. Maybe no. we'll draw each other in the shield. Oh no, there's no need to give me a bye. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind playing. I think for it's uh, playing best for the right of seven play. all the way through to the final, which is a best of nine. Oh, it's good. So you, you'll obviously won't get to play in a best of nine. <laughs> we'll see. Tell you what, I'll bet you a hot dog I'll make it further than what you do, John. I'm already owed one hot dog, actually, so even if I lost that bet, I could get Simon Gray to buy you the hot dog. Well, look, then, if you win that bet, you uh, get two hot dogs, and that's do dinner for tonight, mate. What am I going to do with two hot dogs? One for you, one for the lovely girlfriend you have. She's at work. I sent her to work today, double time, make the money back that I have to give to you. Oh, you're getting ready for the next challenge match, yeah. when, when you want a bit of revenge. Maybe we'll have to have a wee challenge, one of them live stream challenge matches. I think I, we I, could. I know you have five hundred dollars. <laughs> Are we able to comment out on our own games though, John? <laughs> Put the headsets on and play. <laughs> Interactive pool. That bad, that bad same shot. pocket Look at this. causing problems for both players. Oh, here. you got so lucky there. Really bad shot by Ron. Got lucky. Ron's not playing like Ron at the moment. Just a containing shot there by Ben, trying to make it hard to pot that yellow at the top. I'm just going to try and drop this into that pocket, just to cover that pocket behind the red. Very well That's played. A great shot by Ron. Years of playing with Sonny Lister will do that to you. So precise. 
Steve Dukamp on the drink already as he's a thousand dollars richer. <laughs> I actually think that would be the first time Steve DeCamps bought anyone a drink, so... He said he'd buy me a drink later, I do not believe a word he says. He's English, he's not going to buy me a drink. Good shot there by Ben, it looks like he's left a cut down past the red for the yellow, but... That yellow at the top's going to pose a few problems for Ron. run maybe six to eight inches a bit further than what he was trying to there. Steve Saxon's at the table on, over there. We have a chance on yellows to try and take a 3-1 lead. Well, Ron was happy to give away two shots and just push the black over the pocket. Clever, Clever shot. shot, yeah. Big shot there by Ben. <laughs> Ben needs to um, try, and, try and finish the red with one shot to have two on the black here. <coughs> if he wants to pot out, which he will do. It's a good effort, he was trying to get that yellow out of the way to make that red potable. I think you could cut that red into the middle now and come back up and crack onto it again, eh? Know what I'm saying? Cut that red into the middle. White will come off the bottom rail, oh, come back up towards that pocket. He can have, Definitely. A, can have a go at it. It's a fine cut there on that red. White will certainly be travelling if he's going to get it back he's there. He's not going for it. <laughs> oh, he tried to crack the black out, I think. Yeah. Didn't quite manage to get it out there. Yeah, he's going to have to play a safety now because even if he... Even yeah. if he clears the red, he needs two in the black probably, so... I think he'll probably try and double this red back over and try and block that pocket. Either that or roll up behind the, the red next to the yellow. Well, he's going to pot this one first. He's, he's going to have a go at developing this. But he's still need two in the black, so I don't see... He's that was, was a bit of a silly shot, to be honest. Yeah. Even, he wanted to get the black out, but even if he get it out, what are you going to do with that red that's dead? I think he was he was just banking on the fact that Ron can't pot that yellow that's up near the red, so he's thinking if I can get the black out and now he's snookered on his other red. Yeah, he's un un unlucky to leave it there. Jenkins will just try and roll up behind the red, like just touch the cushion. I think he's going to try and kick the yellow over. He's played it with pace, bounce out. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's left it on. A couple of poor shots there from Ben, I think. Yeah, surprising after racing out to a 2 0 lead if he's made a couple of errors and it's going to let Ron back in. Ron's so definitely the favourite for this game. But Ron does need to capitalise. Steve Saxon playing really well. Yeah, it looks like Steve. Oh, Ron Kelly. Ron's got missed again. Missed it again, but. He has put that yellow over the middle pocket. That wasn't even a hard pot. Not really, no. So he certainly put a bit of pressure on the potting from Ben, and that black's not easy where He's it on is. The side, though. I think he needs another one. It's better than a half chance here for Ben. Black's still a bit of a tricky one. 
Oh, God, nerves are kicking in for both of these players here. Yeah, that's that same pocket that's now had three misses in from share between both players. Both players can't put a ball. It's like watching you, Lee. Was that when I beat you, or are we talking about a different time? Are you time? still going on about that? It was so, so yesterday. <laughs> it was actually two days ago, but... <laughs> Ron got very lucky there to be honest, he missed an easy easy shot. Steve Saxon did finish up there to take a 3-1 lead against Matt Bolton. He did. Well done Steve. It looks like there's been another dry break jump. Matty Bolton broken come up drive. Changed here, 3 1 to Steve. <coughs> I'd say Matt would be favourite in this game. Oh, I would have thought so, yeah, especially after the way he played Friday Matt. night and the way he was playing this day. Comp on Friday at yeah. the Calcutta. Yeah, of course, he went for, went for yeah. over $650, 660 I think it was. I think so. it was Matt, Matt Ron, Luke Anglesey. Yeah, I, I Luke Foster was up there. Got a feeling that Michael Ballaman had quite a bit to drink on Friday night and was uh, waving his arms around, not realising he was bidding for players, the amount of players he bought. But We're just about to start the first semi final of the winner side between Tim Kappler and Luke Foster. We're on the middle table here, so we live streaming as soon as Mason is dining it. Boys, get underway. Grace for you. I'm sure you just heard that um, Clint and Luke's match, Race to 11, is just about to get underway. They're just ironing the table. Um, both of them still have a double chance and the winner of that will go straight into the grand final with the double chance. The loser of that will go to the loser side. And the winner of Ben and Ron will play the winner of Matt and Steve. The winner of that will play the loser of Luke and Clint. Yeah, we've got a really exciting lineup of days play here. Some real superstars of WA pull the left in this competition, and and then there's just us commentating. So <laughs> I think Lee's speaking for himself there, to be honest, people. I don't just want to keep bringing up Friday Night John. So oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to let, I'm gonna let it lie. You talk about. I don't, the people haven't heard you say anything else about <laughs> about anything but this Friday night. I think we've. Uh, played each other three times in Super League so far this season and you're yet to get on the board just to remind you of that but you love reminiscing well we'll be able to test this one out Tuesday night because we're, we're coming up against each other again aren't we John we will if I can afford fuel to get there yeah I did offer you a lift didn't I that's right I would never get in your car Is it really 3-0 in Super League for Yeah, it is, yeah. I must admit, I, I do look forward to our games. You've been telling us how good you are since you come down to Perth, do you, so... Do you um, sleep with the statistic book, do you? <laughs> so Clint's got He's the man that's just going to start here. Got this lag here. Clint won the... One first, and Clint's breaking first, is that right? Yep, that's, that's right. First. Really looking forward to this match. Race to 11. Both players have been playing excellent. Who are you tipping? All weekend. I think Luke Foster's going to just get over the line. I think he's. Take that back. Clint's my boy. I've got him in the Calcutta. Don't get me wrong, I, would, I think I'd like to see Clint win. He's a good friend of mine. Would he say the same? Definitely. <laughs> Nah, Clint, I'm a bit, big fan of Clint. I like the guy. Not that I don't like Luke. Yeah. Luke's definitely played shot of the tournament so far. It certainly has. That's a shot that's going to be talked about for a while. We'll come back to um, 
Ron and Ben and Matt and uh, Steve's games a bit later. We'll watch this men game. Race to 11, everybody. Nice opening yellow by Clint. Looks like he's going to go on the attack from the straight away. Nice he, break. He knows so. no other way. Well, I'm sure he does no other way, so he just chooses not to go them ways. Pop balls win games, he reckons. Yeah, safety's overrated. They're all there. They're all there for the out. Yeah, the black's going to be the harder ball over there on the rail, but... I was speaking to Clint before, and he's going to give it everything in this game to have that double double chance in the grand final. Yeah, having that having that double chance really is going to prove uh, it's going to be huge, isn't it? Yeah. Ron Kelly missing pots on this other table. Yeah, he's taken a while to get into this game today. He's, although it's 2-1, he really looks like he's scratching around. And again, again, um, Ben played a game already today, so he's warmed up, you know? Yeah, he said it does make a difference, so... Come on, Clint. What was the... Do you know what the jackpot in the Calcutta was? Like how much we got over there? No, I'm not, I'm not sure, mate. Adrian, Adrian, Adrian. How much did we get in the Calcutta? Sorry? How much did we end up net raising in the Calcutta? Three thousand. So, two, winner... Two grand. Winner gets flopped? Yeah, two thousand. Just found out that the whoever bought the winner of this comp in the Calcutta will make two thousand dollars. That'd be nice. Well, Michael Ballam's hoping that. Uh, Come on, Clint. <laughs> Michael's <laughs> hoping he's got the winner because he he's put half that fund in himself. Yeah. Clint's my boy. He might he might put food on the table yet for me this week. <laughs> Looks like we'll be playing sooner than I thought, John. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want to play in one of them live stream matches for 500? Well, I think you've got to play. I think the minimum that you're allowed to play is 500 each. Hmm? We can do that. I think it's got to be minimum a race to 15, but... Yeah, no, that's fine. The only race I wouldn't pay, play you in is around the car park, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'd definitely be faster at running. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you there. Just wasn't able to force a way round onto that black there. Clint, ran out of position a bit. I think he'll just try and come off this black and maybe bring it down towards this bottom rail. And Is it double into the top back? I think it does, though. Big shot if it does. The white will be going a bit far yeah, if it's in there. Safety. Yeah, so yeah. Look, it's thought he'd play it's safe, but, shot, but it's like it, it's safe because Luke can't pot out. But all, all Luke has to do is leave the white up there under the table, and he's got no, no shot on it. Yeah, that's right. He hasn't put the black potable. So he's got, he might come up, come up the rail here and break break a couple of his dead balls out, and just even if he leaves them on the black, he can't pot the thing. Yeah, he's just put no pressure on the shot. That's I think I would have went, went for the double and left the white on the bolt cushion. Yeah, see, he's, he's got both of them dead balls off the rail. He has done, but one of those reds that where it's sat next to his other red, it, they only really pop into, into the, the right hand it, yeah. corner. So. Nice to get a snooker on, but just to hit the one further stop the table away and leave the white on the other one. Let's see what, Clint might have a double on here, we can't really tell from here. Can't really tell from here on the computer screen, but... No, he's, he's trying, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. I think he was just trying to, trying to get the black out and... He was just... Didn't really do that? It was just a hard clearance and he was banking on Luke not making the out. Yeah. He's left this bottom, the red tough near the bottom rail, right in the middle the there. The good thing about it is he's left the black relatively hard. Like 
for Luke not to put out. But, uh, Steve Saxon 4 1 up. Is that right? It certainly is, yeah. He's flying out the uh, box over Ron there in Kelly Sacco. And ben Foster T2. Okay, everybody, the four players are here for the um, for the play. Scott Healy, Sam Hart, Dave Fallon, and Ben Williams. If any of you guys are here, or someone knows that they're coming, come a little bit later, otherwise they'll be able to draw down. I'll ring, I'll ring Dave. I'll ring Dave, eh? Dave. Yeah, no, do something, do something, Dave. That's a good jump that Sacco's got on Bolt's 4 1. Because yeah, Bolton's been starting really well all weekend. Yeah, he has been playing really strong. Um, Maybe he's still asleep. Maybe he's still asleep. Yeah, he's probably uh, probably spending some of his money that he won off Ron on his match on Friday night. Yeah, I was commenting with Ron earlier today, I was bringing it up, but he didn't want to bite, you know. Ron's been missing pots the last couple of frames, but still winning them, so Ben needs to change that. Otherwise, it's going to be all over before he knows it. Ron broke, come up drive. It's a good shot there by, by Luke. He's got his other balls out, so they all look potable from there. He's got the, those couple near the rail, but he's freed those two up. Clint's so going to try and come off the rail. And is Clint Snooker total snooker? Looks like he is, but he should be able to get out of it pretty quickly. Pretty easily. He's I think he's actually pot. looking at the putting angle here. He's looking at pot, isn't it? I wonder how close the white will come down to this. If he does come in behind it, the white's then going to come down towards this bottom pocket. Swerved around that red nicely. It's a very hard shot, but he yeah, was a good effort. But it's not looking good for Clint now, it's here. At least the black's in a position where if he does get another chance, he's, he's still got that one dead red, so he might, he might play another second. I think Luke will back himself to be able to develop that off one of those reds up the top. Mm. If not, play a snicker. Man, just talking about the straight shot he had in the middle to make it eight all against Ben, and he missed it. He's going to go for the snooker here. Hasn't very got bad it. Shot by Luke. That's what I was saying. Just where he's left that black. If he had done that a bit earlier, left the, the pot. Black's, the black's completely on him. I think Luke double kissed there. He, he tried just to clip the red and go up, and it double kissed on the white, taking all the pace off the white. It certainly did, yeah. Um, Clint's on the black here. Only annoying thing about it is on the rail, but it's still back Clint to pot this. Seeing as he hasn't missed a pot all weekend. And I just jinxed it. He, he was your investment in the comp, John. And you basically him. made him miss that. A couple of mistakes early by both players. They haven't made mistakes all weekend, but the nerves, nerves would be definitely on them. We've seen as uh, the winner goes into the grand final with the double chance to chance to win five thousand dollars, which is massive. Oh, and a miss cue by Foster. Look fast, it was just miscue. I think it might be the first time these two players have played the game. <laughs> Miscues and straight shots getting missed. I'm going to leave that one to you, John, because as I said, they're, they're still playing and we're not. I'm playing, it's not Paul. Clint's going to have a go at this double here. He's double it? He's going it, I think. He's oh, got that's it. a great double. Great shot. 1 0, Clint Kapler. Misses the strip black, puts it up. Work that shit. <laughs> Beat. <laughs> it's 
Sorry, just going to have to censor my co-commentator there. He's uh, got a bit excited. Sorry for the viewers at home. Break by Luke Foster. I think he's just, I think he's just potted four balls there off the break. <coughs> Not sure if you saw that, John. Luke's just potted four balls off the break. Really? I've potted that many balls this weekend off my breaks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say the whole competition. You did get knocked out in straight sets, didn't you? I did, yeah, come up against a couple of tough players and... That was unexpected actually, I was backing you for um, one of the best in the video. So was I mate, I was uh, a little bit disappointed to have gone out the way I did, but that's Paul. Who did you come up against? Adrian and... Adrian Lancaster got me 11-10 and Simon Gray got me 11-9, uh, sorry, 9-7. Um, Adrian sh was supposed to beat you, but you'd, you'd be favourite against Simon. He's played well at the moment. He seems to be the man in form today, Steve Saxon, of everyone. I think after uh, Matt's money match against um, Ron Kelly, he uh, became probably one of the, the actual comps started. Ron Kelly was the favourite to, uh, to win it. So. But then Matty polished him off quite easy in the money match on the Friday night. That's right. <laughs> Ron's, Ron's got what a position over there. He was on that pot out and he's... Ron Kelly and Ben Foster. Has he, has he clipped it? I wonder if that's enough angle on there. We can't tell from this angle. You might be able to see it a bit better from your position, John. What's he on? He's on the yellows. Looks like the white's too close to it to get, get enough on it, you know? Also, it's more if it can actually pot because he's got the he's got the two balls um yeah, up on the bottom rail and uh, the bottom pocket I should say. He must have been very confident in that pot, yeah. otherwise he's just trying to block it. He's shaking his head, so he's not happy with how it finished. Thank you. I, I think he was trying to pot it, or well, block it better. It was a very hard um, pocket to block from that position. I think he might have been trying to go knuckle red and in. Like, hit the knuckle and then hit the red and then it goes in, you know? Yeah. But he's not happy, he's shaking his head. Well, he's given, he's given a clean opportunity here. Ben Foster just, just went... Potted the white, uh, giving Ron Kelly two shots. He needs to stop making these mistakes against Ron because Ron's not playing well. He needs to capitalise yeah. on it. I think um, Clint's in the same position as what Foster was just a second ago. I think the red definitely goes, but it doesn't. Yeah, the red, the red definitely went. That's why I was like, he's, you know, he's in a very good position now to, to, uh, to get the frame. I think he's just yellow away from the pocket a bit just to make it harder for him, but it shouldn't matter. He should still finish this. He needs to just get rid of the nerves, because the way he was playing yesterday, no one will touch him. Ron Kelly, I commented with Ron Kelly this morning, and Ron reckons that Ron didn't play one bad shot against him, and he got Clint beat him 11-6. Ron Kelly was happy with the way he played. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just showing you the form that Clint's got. You know, he's, um, I know he's, he's, he mentioned to me that he's been practicing a fair bit more um, and uh, making the state team again. He's, he's, he's even more confident, so 
think he'll go close to being vice captain this year of the state team. With the likes of um, Brownie having the year off and Sonny probably not going. I think Clint will go close to vice captain. Yeah, well, I think he's probably one of the more experienced players and he's very level headed as well. So, and he's captain um, of a Super League team. And then the Super League team that's doing very well again this year as well. Yeah. If Steve Saxon makes a team, I'd say he'd be captain, maybe Clint Vice. Unless old Adrian gets the nod, but I'd, he won't. He won't if he's playing Masters and and Men's. Yeah, that's right. Well done, Clint. This should be two one to Clint Catwell and the rest are living. Well done, Clint. Very, very nice out, Clint. 2-1 Clint. I think this will go break for break for quite some time to be honest. Well I think I think that they will give uh, Clint a fair bit of a boost in his confidence. Yeah, I was a very good out. Um, he, d he just had to play everything right. He didn't have to uh, do anything fancy, which he didn't. So. I definitely feel a bit of nerves today but from both players. That's a very uh, unusual... Matt, he's shaking his head, he's getting yeah, that angry he's, look about him. He's drawn that ball, and it's very unusual for Matt. Normally he's like a potting king. King of all Q sports, Matty. I was reading earlier, he's 12 times Australian billiards champion. That's right. That's, that's a lot of years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, when, when you watch him on the table, I was actually lucky enough to uh, watch him when he was um, playing in the state titles where he got his, uh, I, th I believe it was 864 highest break. I'm just trying to see what that, if they do have that listed. Um, you know, felt felt very sorry for the other guy. It was a three hour match and the other guy basically touched the table for about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And that was it. So uh, He's currently ranked third in the world at billiards. In the yeah, whole he's, world. He's a brilliant player to watch, you know, he's, um, for, to, to be able to, to just uh, keep the ball and keep control for, for a good three hours, um, Billy is a beautiful spot to watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with it, like, I know, I know what it is, but I, I'm, I've never seen it properly. Uh, I, I had I had Matt actually showing me a few tips and tricks and that sort of thing um, in regards to billiards and, um, you know, just the way he sees a half ball angle, it's just amazing that yeah. he can picture it from anywhere and, and as he said to me... Letting Clint in here, very hard. It's very hard out for Clint here. I don't, I don't think he'll try and go out, but he usually does. So <laughs> we'll see what he does. Well, there's not really a lot of safety that you can play here. I'm just trying to look, at, you know, to try and snooker behind the two reds or near the middle pocket. Um, he's got that yellow down near the near the uh, top corner there. Yeah. So, you know, realistically, I think you know, trying to block a pocket's also not really much of an opportunity here either. Someone's 4-3 up between Ron Kelly and Ben Foster, I'm not sure who. Simon, who's 4-3 up over there? Ron. Ron Kelly's got the lead against Ben, 4-3. Ben just broke and come up dry. The luck's turning for Ron. I think Clinton is going to try, try and pop the one over the corner, um, get position on the middle pocket, or he might come down straight away for that ball. He's always looking for that, Clinton. He's so good at it. Look at that for a pop. Is that a straight plan? Well, that's what I was like trying it. to look at. It. Yeah, it, it looks like you could probably get a little bit of angle on it, um, so but it's a, it. it's a very high risk shot. If it's straight, it's straight, but it looks like it's just edging into the, the side cushion. Yeah, I don't think it's straight. Plus there's a bit of a gap between the two reds, so... If anyone can pull it off, but it's clear. He's definitely thinking about it. Unless he um, puts the red in the middle of the table in the in the middle pocket, the white will the white will come off the top angles and down. I think that's probably a better shot unless unless this is unless this plant's straighter than what it looks. 
looks like he's going to go for it. Pretty risky. Sonny Lister hates plants. <laughs> oh, must have been straighter than we thought. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Played it well, but still not easy. Yeah, he's going to have to leave himself on, a, on a, a long, hard red for his last shot. Seven to Steve Saxon on Matt Ball. Yeah, and so he must Steve is just on fire at the moment. Watch now, he's potting and uh, Matt's making a lot of mistakes as well over there. I think Kepler's arm come out at the back there before he played that shot. You see that? Oh, I did miss that shot. I was just having a look at the Steve Saxon on that Bolton game. He didn't get the <laughs> position anyway, but as soon as he hit the shot, his arm come out just before he hit the white. So that's why he missed the pot. But he got, he got quite lucky with the... Um, with the leave. Even though there's no such thing as a dead ball to look faster to be honest. I think he'll um, take the ball up the up the highest point of the table here and even if it even if it doesn't go in and it goes over, you're leaving it quite safe. Because the white's coming over the other side. So he'll be backing himself to part right? Looks like that dipped in a little bit though. It's always a bit of hard, he's played a bit of side on there as well. Looks like it dipped into the cushion a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Saxon is dominating on that other table. Matty Bolton needs to wake it up a little bit. Might be too late now though. He's hung his last yellow, Steve's letting him back to the table, but Steve's still definitely in the um, in the box seat in that frame. Matty's making too many mistakes, but in playing against the informed Steve Saxon. Look at this, Clint. Oh. Clint, oh, that is so unlucky. Oh, he did get oh, it. Went in. Yeah, he did eventually go in. Some shot there by Clint. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. He left himself on the red though. Looks like he has snookered himself. He does. He does them shots he, all the time. He's so good. So good at attacking. I think it's a double. He, he's left a double on. He can't cut it into the middle. He's gonna have to double it, which is oh, not a problem. Beautiful. For him. That's. Really needs to think about his white ball control a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Do here, John. I'm really curious on what you would do here. I don't think so. If it, I think it is it touching ball. It must yeah, be. It must, it must be. be. It's touching ball. So I just kill one of his yellows. Put one of his. Probably put, put this yellow here up to the rail and leave the white in the box. He, he, he's very lucky that it is a touching ball there, because <laughs> I honestly don't know what I would do if it wasn't touching. Definitely, I'd kill one of the yellows. You'd have to, if it's touching ball, which it is, definitely got to kill one of the yellows. There we go. The, the, the pot is still on, obviously, but he's, he's got work. He's got work to do, you know. I don't know if he was unlucky for that uh, leave on the black, or that he was lucky <laughs> for it to be touching yeah. ball after that shot, you know. It's See, Luke, Luke Foster. If, if it was an informed potting machine, Luke Foster, you'd take that hard ball right now and drill it down the line, but he missed one exactly the same just a few minutes ago. He'll try and crack it off. I think he's got it perfect to screw back and crack that yellow off. Backspin, crack it off the rail. He's going to have to hit it perfectly. He's so good with his white ball, with Foster. Yep. 
a brilliant he, he shot. He has hit it perfectly. Steve Saxon has just potted the black to get him 8 2 up. It's unbelievable by Steve Saxon. Oh, look, Luke. Foster has missed that yellow. Really didn't expect that. It's a great chance for Clint. Very good at composing himself, Clint. Um, yeah. Knew that he was a little bit nervous then and stood back up. Does it all the time. If he's not happy with the shot, he stands up again. Sometimes takes a little bit too long, but... <laughs> Well done, Clint. You deserve that. After those two massive shots. Looks like he'll be kicking himself. Oh, Ben. Just Ben's just about to make it 4 all against Ron Kelly. He fought back into that frame really, really well, Ben. And that is 4 all. Ron Kelly, Ben Foster, 4 all and a rest of nine. Steve Saxon's on the hill against Matthew Bolton. 8-2, which is... Huge Looking at where all those reds are, there's, there's a good chance that uh, that Steve can, can go out from here. I don't think anyone can stop this one at the moment. Matty Bolton's not doing too good, at, too good at it, anyway. Some amount of side on that work though. It's, it's, not, it's not too difficult to say, is it? It would be for me and you. Yeah, <laughs> I think Mark is just uh, talking for himself there, to be honest, before. <laughs> You'd sneak yourself on the last ball, Absolutely. you know that. <laughs> I basically master break every single time I break, but I'm sticking myself in the black. Exactly. So. Steve Sachs has definitely got uh, the chance to go for out here and beat Matt Bolton 8. Can we just uh, click on to Steve Saxon's game, please? He's on and out to make it 9. Yeah, he's on 8-2 yep. and he's on and out here. We'll just watch this and then go back to the main, main game. He's queuing very well today, Steve. That's a great position. He had a hard game against Brownie l late last night. Um, well, it was 7 all. Brownie clawed back to 7 0, and then Steve got the last two, 197. Knocking my uh, Calcutta buy out of the comp. One of my Calcutta buys out of the comp. Did you just try to buy everyone? Is that the way that you play? No. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'd always buy Alan Brown if he's only $110. From Clint Kepler for 150 <laughs> Bargains. You know, one of them's going to be in amongst it. Lee Thayer's 2 1 up oh. against um, Sam Bunny. Steve just left himself in a similar sort of shot that uh, Clint Kappa did in the last frame. <laughs> Steve will be kicking himself. He shakes his head. He's got that grumpy, angry look on his face that you see so often from Steve. Is it touching ball? I don't think it is. <clears throat> He's, he's um, looking at it, he's looking like he's got to come off that black. You try and put this in the middle, still just go off the rail, you're 8 up. Come off the rail, bang it in the middle. I think that's what even he's going to try it, and do. Even if you don't hurt it, right, there's a chance you can hit the other cushion and then the other middle, bang. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> well done, Steve. Steve Saxon. <laughs> <laughs> what a huge out. 9-2, <laughs> Matt Bolton out of the competition. Steve Saxon is the man in form at the moment. Well done, Steve. He plays the winner of Ron Kelly and Ben Foster. I'm really curious to know if he went for the double or he was actually going for the triple. <laughs> that, that's the beauty of them shots, but even if, if, he, if he hit it too full, you got the chance of that, you know? Yeah. So, Matthew Bolton just threw a chair. <laughs>
Just as much as everyone does know, he didn't really throw a chair. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting shot from Luke there. I thought he just popped that with screw back, but he played it off the other red. And I think he was going for the out, but... Uh, it's still, it's still worked out for him, but... Strange job. He's left Clinton in a really hard position there. Yeah, he even, even the fact that he didn't pull it. Yeah, Clint's, Clint's got a bit of work to do here, that's for sure. He's going to have to tie it up and draw the game out. Beautiful shot by Clint. It's a good little snooker. The only probably thing that he didn't like about that shot is the fact that he's uh, made it very difficult on those two balls at the bottom cushion. I think um, I think Luke will just roll the right white up the top the top cushion. Sit sit behind the two two uh, two yellow. Make it touch That's the ball. It's bottom cushion. But <laughs> top cushion. No. That's the bottom. Oh. <laughs> This is the top of the table, uh, where all the balls are sitting in the black. Not this weekend, I miss. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think he'll just he'll nestle the white um, in behind the two yellows. Making Clint waste his first shot. Could be wrong. Oh, he's he's going he's gonna to roll one of Clint's yellows down towards the red over the pocket. Just killing another one of uh, Clint's yellows. Good job. Clint can use all uh, the three balls and put them over the over the red that's in the pocket there, um, stopping Luke getting into that pocket. And of course, that will help help to to get the balls out later on as well. So I think the, on, the only way Clint will win this frame is if he completely covers one of them reds and then puts the black over. He's gonna just he's gonna play around for a bit, and get the balls in better positions. Yeah. Luke might just roll another yellow down here or two. Either that or pot the yellow over the bag. angles now on the same game which is always good. Now we can see those angles which we couldn't see before. Yeah. Well, Kelly and um, Ben Foster both playing safety shots over there. Both playing really well. I'm not sure what Luke was trying to do there. I think he was trying to roll that yellow down and kissed it down. You don't want too many uh, yellows over that red, otherwise he doesn't get a clear shot at the red. When these opportunities there to, 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 to go out, so... Yeah, and Clinton will be looking to probably try and put a few more balls over that pocket. He's got a lot of work to do, isn't he? He's going to have to completely... completely tie it up to have a chance, I think. Unless he can... double a couple with two shots. Even the black's dead, you know? He's going to have to cover it up and get the black, bring the black over. He's not going to black out. This is going to be a drawn out game unless Clint makes a mistake, so we'll finish. I think that's the hardest part is the fact that uh, Luke's got both the black and the uh, yellows covered there.
unfortunately not being a, uh, a better player than I am, <laughs> um, I, I really don't know what uh, is going through Clint's set at the moment to, on what he can do in this actually. I think Clint will put a couple of easy hours. Well, it's one. Oh, easy, easy, easy. He's, gonna try and he's definitely made that a little bit more difficult for Luke to get into. He's, he's going to um, try and cover the other pocket maybe now. Oh, while while um, Luke's still got one red out in the middle of the table, he needs to try and cover cover them reds and then get the black over, giving him two shots, so it's not a false snooker. He's trying, to, he's trying to get the yellow in behind the black. Too, yeah, he has. Looks like you still, you've got a drawn out game between Ron Kelly and Ben Foster as well. They're you know, both fight, trying to fight back into the frame. We'll just keep commentating for a little bit longer then. Yeah, we're getting <laughs> called to play, but there's nobody to comment it. You get to listen to our lovely insight of uh, I just come back and I'm just gone, okay, I guess Luke did go for the out. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing so. <laughs> and he's snookered himself in the black. He's going to be kicking himself, he went for the out. <laughs> Not really, you've got to be confident. Sometimes by playing, keeping it safe all the time, you can lose a frame as the other guy starts to work out what he can do better. The you're, giving, you're giving him time to try and get think, outthink you in the frame. So Where he was, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have went for that. You're in complete control. I would, I would have rolled the red that was in the middle of the table, I would have rolled the red up to the top top pocket. If it went in, it went in. If it didn't, it didn't. for Clint. Clint's got a good opportunity Luke now. Foster's definitely making mistakes that, that um, doesn't like him. Last time he missed that last yellow and Clint had the easy black. It's just, hap it's just happened again. Clint will, Clint will finish this. Okay. I, I, d I don't think that Luke's going to get back on the table in this frame. I think Clint's uh, you know, got to clear out here. If Clint's definitely got his confidence back up um, after the last frame. And Ron Kelly's just given uh, Ben Foster a foul snooker by the looks of things. He's not very happy with the way he's playing. Uh, don't blame him, he's definitely... He, ha he has definitely him. been struggling this weekend. He played very, he played really, really well against Steve Saxon. He played Steve Saxon. And he got Steve 9-3, and he'd probably done six master breaks in there, and he played oh, wow. really well, but just coming and going, isn't it? Uh, 
Okay, Clint's left himself in a really hard position here. I still think it's potable, but it's not the easiest pot. I thought Clint hit that quite hard. I didn't think he had to hit it that hard. Yeah, I missed it, but it looked like an easy out until I looked back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just played the, the ball in the uh, corner pocket a bit too hard for a positional shot. Oh, that's, a, that's a huge shot. That was a great pot. Brilliant, by Clint. <laughs> ben Foster, um, five four up. Ben Foster, five four up against Ron Kelly. That one there was clean. Clint's now 4 1 up. Clint's definitely going to have some confidence building right now. Just looking for another commentator so I can go and play Luke Anglesey. Hopefully, they don't find another commentator. <laughs> <laughs> miracles happen, John. Miracles happen. <laughs> Really trying to get uh, Wayne Gilmore to get on the uh, microphone to commentate, but um, he's a little bit shy than I thought he was. Um, normally he's um, got a really loud voice and he's, you can hear him from anywhere in any room, but um, he just, he's just now shy as, as soon as he finds out that people are in Australia that can uh, hear him. And uh, really, really love Steve uh, to, to get on the, on the microphone, but uh, with his, with his uh, knowledgeable insight of the game, but um, he's a little bit shy too. <laughs> So uh, I, th I think I think two really good commentators on there would be Wayne and Steve, don't you think? Yeah, they'd definitely not be as good as us, Marchie, but... <laughs> they might have a clue of what's actually going to happen in the game, though. <laughs> Wayne wouldn't. <laughs> oh, that's all right. We've got we've managed to get uh, Gordon coming down to to take over. Shouldn't take long for Luke Anglesey to polish me off, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Consolation Shield that we're playing for. It's uh, 800 to the winner and 400 to the runner up. Not bad at all, is it? Oh, yeah, for, for like a beauty prize. <laughs> Fossil's actually in a really tough out here if he decides to go for it. <laughs> Not really many positions that you can go safe here. Stand over Gordon Whitaker. Oh. you going, Gordon? I'm very good, thank you. Tough match here. And I'll, I'll pass my microphone over to uh, Dan. You run mad. Yes, man. Ron Kelly and Ben Foster, tough match this one. Yeah, <laughs> 
Uh, I've been watching from the sideline over there, Gordon. Hey? I've been watching this match from the sideline. It's a very good... Oh, Ronnie's got a nick off the yellow there to knock that red in the corner, Dan. What yep. a great shot. Great shot. Yeah, Ron's uh, looking composed as ever. Absolutely. He's, uh, He's the ultimate both, professional, young Ronnie. Both the boys have been hitting reasonably well. Yes. Tell you what, Clint's been—he's been looking like he's hitting well in this frame too, in this yeah. uh, match. He has, he definitely has. Fine young player, Clint. Good value pick up in the Calcutta too. Absolutely. How much did he go for? Well, I think he went for 150 bucks. 150 bucks. What a buy for young Clint Kepler. I'll be dirty if he gets it. Yeah. I told the missus afterwards. I, I thought about going in above Jimmy. Oh my God. Mucked this up, he's yeah, still getting himself, he he's too. coming he's behind the reds. Buried that hard. He's full one up though, he's got a bit of breathing space here. He's been totaled. with a bit of side here, Dan, I think. I think he's going to have to. Uh, he's going to probably have to come off near the middle, I reckon. Can't quite see whether he's got the angle to do that. It looks like he's playing the three cushion shot. Oh no, oh, he's, he's just going to run up the top. Playing a dead yeah. wide up the top. take a chance on disturbing any of the balls, he just uh, played away, gave away the two shots. little promotion shot that yeah giving himself a opportunity to an opportunity for the out here make a sure. run at it up shot there uh, for the folks at home. Yeah. yeah. He might be playing the deep screw. Yes, he is. Oh, he's kissed oh, into the black. Oh, he's hit that black a bit hasn't thick. Hasn't done him any favours. Yes. I think that might be the end of the out, unless he pulls off a big one here. These young blokes doing so well in these comps. Very, very good players. Yes, the uh, Foster brothers are a yeah, both a powerful, powerful pair of players. Oh, for sure. The Geraldton boys. Yeah, he's playing a safety here. Oh, he, he hasn't left him anything easy. He's got a. He's quarter left. ball cut into the corner, which he might have to take on. Knowing Clint, he loves to attack the game. Yeah, that's the thing I was going to say. With all this uh, yeah. younger generation, Gordon, they, uh, they're they not afraid to attack. Oh, absolutely not. When their confidence is up, they like to run with it. Yep. Keep the tempo up. He's played it nice way. Oh, no, oh, he hasn't he's, even yeah, gone he's for it. Played. He's just played the safety. Safe. Which is surprising. I watched uh, a few weeks ago, Clint played 
Ron Kelly in a race to 15 down here for a cash match. Yep. First time I'd really seen a lot of Clint's game, but I was really impressed. He's a smart player. Oh, he's a very clever, clever young man. Yeah. With a cue in his hand. Kept his composure and he took Ron to 14 15. Yeah, great match. missed that pot into the corner which would now give Clint a chance I reckon he's got this one down the rail I reckon now uh, he might play the new one I think he's got to play the right hand side one down the rail if he's going for this play this dead weight and roll it over which won't leave uh, Luke a great deal and if it drops he's, uh, he's got an out on yeah that's right oh, no, oh he's, he's played attacked with aggression. it he's attacked the shot he's attacked that and, and he's out. there he's come out well Got one to the right centre or one down the rail to the left hand pocket. Yeah, he's played it well. Great shot, Clint. I think he'll be playing this one into the corner now with a little stun back for the red into the centre. Yep. He's uh, decided to run through it, but he's yeah. come up a bit short. Yeah, he's underdone it. He might have to go off the top cushion and come back down. Stun inside the two yellows. Or into the bottom pocket is the other alternative. Yeah, he's just uh, he's looking at both options at the moment. Yes, he's got two options. And I, think he, I think he might play the shot into the centre and come off the top cushion and run back down. No, no he's, he's going, going for the corner. He's going for the corner. Oh, or is he? Yes, yeah, he's going yeah. for the corner. Play for the corner. Yeah, he should get this. Hold that white. Nicely yes, played. he's played it, but he's ended up on the back cushion and made it uh, a little bit more difficult than it needed to be into the centre. It's about a half ball cut though. Clint should get this. Rolled it in just there, played it, it well. Off the jaw and he goes to a 5-1 lead. 5-1 lead, it's a good early lead. Good early lead. Racing to 11. Yeah. Quick shout out to the sponsors, Privacy Fencing Perth and uh, Mr Billiards, Braden Desenza. Of course, Miss Q's Pool Room hosting the event here this weekend and uh, the streaming brought to you by Q-Ball TV. Yes, they're all doing, it, doing a great job for pool. Fantastic job. That's very impressed with the uh, setup that Dan from Cuball TV's got. Oh, it's magnificent. All the different camera angles, the close ups, as you can see now on screen. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. <coughs> it's a nice break. Yes, great break by young Clint Kepler. He's potted a red ball off the break, so. If he takes them, he's on them, whether he pots one or not. And I dare say he will take the reds. Because they are uh, got heads on them like white mice. They're standing out there waiting to be potted. They sure are.
nominated reds and taken the red ball into the corner, which uh, has left him right on the one into the left hand bottom pocket. <coughs> Should be able to knock this in and run off and uh, possibly get on the one in the middle. Oh, would have been nice to have kissed that. Would have been. He's left, left him, himself a bit of a Chinese, a Chinese snooker, snooker there. Yeah. <laughs> Played. I think he'll be on the one into the corner right now, unless he plays the two ball plant into the centre. Uh, that plant's not caught on if we, uh, I don't think. No, oh, he might be going for might the double. Go for the double. Yeah, might be going for the double on this one. And he has. He has, oh, and uh, he's just caught just that caught outside the edge. Yep. Yes, Luke, Luke's got a bit of work to do here to go out. Yeah, he has. He'd be, uh... He's quite capable of doing it, but uh, there's, a f there's a fair bit there to be done. Capable, he'd be, he'd be keen to get some... Uh, get a couple on the board. Yes, for sure. Get, get a him. bit of momentum back in his game. That's right. shot there but he's got a bad kiss on that ball he he got into it a little bit too much yep I think he's gonna have to come up with something special here Dan yeah I think so he might cut that one along the rail and check side it and run down near this uh, left hand corner top pocket which mightn't be a bad ploy no, he's not going for that. I think he's going to look at running this other one down the rail. Yeah, inside the other yellow down in the corner pocket. Yes, no, he's dropped it. Great right shot. Well. Knocked, knocked the yellow away from the black. Opened the game up completely. He may have to play the double here. It looks like it's pretty much on there, Dan. Or he might... Yeah, down the double. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, he's jawed it. Jawed it. both jaws. Oh, the table's open now for Clint. Yeah, this is... Uh, he's uncovered the black and uh, it's all there now to be taken. Should be a uh, reasonably trouble-free out for Clint. Absolutely. And if he stuns it, he's just going to avoid the kiss on that yellow down the bottom there, I think. Yeah. And I think he has to stun this, otherwise the inner on in the corner. Yep. No, he seems to be yes. fine at Arlo Natural. A little bit of stun, yes. Just going to roll this one in. Roll Leave the red for in. the right hand yes. corner. Leave himself a nice angle to. Uh, Probably just roll through, put the black in the same pocket. Yes, it looks uh, the way down was there from here. Oh, he's overhit it and popped it out of the pocket. That was a big chance gone missing. <coughs> screw back to get on the bottom one down on the rail, Dan. What do you think? Well, if he's going to attack it, that's the way he's 
probably has to go. There's not much value in putting that one in the middle, I don't think. He may play the one... No, I don't think he'll play the one down the rail at this stage. I think he's got to play that and screw back to get on the one on the bottom push, but we'll see what he does. He does know his game. Yeah, going low on the white balls, going for the screw. Yeah, he's playing the one down the rail. Played it gently though and left himself yes. that pot to the corner. Yes, he's done it well. I don't think he's got the angle to get on that one though down there, has he? He may have a tad of an angle. Oh yes, he could have a tad. Yeah, he's just playing a bit of side playing on that. With, playing with the run, big run. Oh, oh, he's chored it, trying to get on that bottom yeah. one. Too much effort oh, into that position. Yes, he's left the table open for Clint now. He's got just a roll down the rail. This could be one of those inner over shots or he might pump it in. Oh, he's jawed it as well. He's jawed it. He's he went for the big pump and jawed it. Which has left Luke a little cut back in front, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Five minutes, you told me. Yeah, he's going to... Uh, he's probably just going to have to roll this one under and try and uh, take control of that pocket. Yes, I think that's going to be what he will do here. Oh, it's dropped. Oh, it's dropped. Oh dear, he didn't want that. He didn't need that at all. No, that was a bad mistake there by uh, Lukey. Yes, he's in a touch of bother here now. Yeah, I think so. He might uh, play these in such a way that he leaves the two balls lined up. Which it looks like is what he's looking at to do. Yeah, try and force the cannon. Yeah. Oh, he's got the kiss to land there, and it yeah, I think he was hoping. Yeah, I think he, he was hoping to uh, get a bit more over. value. He was hoping to push one of those over the over the hole. Yeah. So he's taken all the pressure off Clint here. He can just roll this down. But no, Clint, he might uh, play this with a bit of venom. No, he's just rolled oh, and it he's down played and that played a cannon beautiful well. cannon. Yep. Yes, if he didn't leave one over the hole of that shot, he took all the pressure off Clint. Yep. Just past the and black, and beautiful. Beautiful back past the black. To knock it in the same pocket. Oh, Clint's running away with this game a bit now. He is. 6 1 to Clint. 6 Catlow. 1, that's a nice little lead. Yes, he's done quite well there, Dan. And back Ron. over to the Ron and Ben Foster match. 7 5 to Ron Kelly at the moment. Ben's just broke the balls. It's potted a red. Ron's broke the ball, so Ron's I apologise. Yeah, potted, potted a red. Potted a red's got a open. nice spread there. Either yeah, way he yeah. wants to go. Yes, they're all looking good from here. I wouldn't expect Ronnie to uh, not go out from here, from this situation. He's decided to take the reds. He's playing the fine cut into the centre. Played it quite well, except for that red that hasn't quite gone on in the other corner. Yes, looks like he'd be on that red into the centre now to kiss into the yellow to stay on the other one in the other centre there, Dan. What do you uh, think? Good chance, Gordon. All right. Hello, we're back to Clint Kepler and Luke Foster for frame number eight. Luke with a break, it's potted balls, potted a red at this stage. The reds are looking quite good. There's a couple that are a bit dodgy. The yellows, there's only one ball that's 
camp it. He may take the yellows here and but kiss this one away from the red. Right, if he can, I think. No, he might not have that might angle. Might not have the angle, but uh, I think he might be right, Gordon. Yeah. Be easier to make a start on the yellows, I think. I think so, mate. Yes, he's on the yellows. He's got one difficult ball to manoeuvre around. Had a glance over at wrong play and I shot over on that other table there, Gordon. He's just played the most magnificent oh, position shot. Absolutely, he's got on the difficult red. He, he's just threaded that white ball in there. Threaded the needle, he has. Beautifully. Nice little pot there by Luke. Yes, he needs to get stuff going here now. 6 1 down. It's about time to put the medal to the pedal. Lovely black. Lovely black. I expected him to pot out from that break. Eight fives handy when you're racing to nine. Absolutely. <coughs> Meanwhile, Luke's messed up. And he's let Clint back to the table. Once again. He's two or three difficult shots to go out here. He might play the runoff into the middle and knock that one on the side rail up towards the middle. other red down the rail. Yes, that's where he was going. Run this one down the rail and take control of that pocket. <laughs> if he had a little bit uh, less angle on that, he could have stayed for that. Well, he hasn't Ooh, played that too well. No. He's come away from the pocket a bit. Give him Luke an opportunity here. Yes, Luke's got a slight opportunity here, Dan. Still got a bit of work to do. He might have to find cut into the middle. This is a bit dangerous, though, to open that up at this stage. Yeah. What we're saying, though, Gordon, these young fellas, they don't mind having a go. Oh, mate, they've got no fear. Yes, he's oh, played it, hasn't it come but out. it hasn't come out too good for him. He still might have a nick down the rail on this other one, and he might be able to check side it to come back over for come it. Come back and he attempt to reposition that. Yes, he's playing this with the check. He's got to go around the back of it. Oh, oh he's that's kicked it out. Not a beautiful. bad shot. He's kicked it out beautiful. Pushed it over the pocket. And he's, he's got the fine cut into the corner. Just got to drift past that red yeah. on the rail. Yep, that's the problem ball for him there, I think, but yep. with it being so fine. As long as he can get it past that yep. run up the top. Uh, oh. He's jawed it, jawed trying it. to get there. He got there, but it's the position is no good unless you get the pot. Clint's got to find a start here. <laughs> Might have to be. It's ball on to ball, I think, and I just think push it over the pocket. I think that's what he'd be playing. It's going to have to be. to go in. 
He's got a little bit of work to do yet, though. Yep. Young Clint. He's played it gently. Oh, and he hasn't. Oh, he's covered it a little, but it's still on. He's left the ball on into the corner. Yep. So Luke comes Luke's back to the table with a chance. Going to have to get a good bit of position here, but... Uh, no, we shouldn't have too much difficulty with this There's not one. a lot in his way. No. Just run around the outside of that black, and he should be on it. Had a side needed. Yes, he's played it well. He's got a bit of work to do here, though, to go out because unless he's using that red to screw back off, which he may do, play the deep screw yeah. off the red. Gonna make sure he gets the pot though. Yes, he's that's the big thing he's got to do. Yeah, he's played he's it well. Yeah, he's yeah, got to hope yeah, these balls clear that the black. Yeah, covered no, the black pocket. It's covered it. He may play it off the red. Oh no, might be on. Yeah, it might be, might be just a little wiggle that in there. He's getting down and having a close look. Oh, he's, he might be half a chance here. Be a nice gentle shot of in or over. Oh, oh he's, he's played done well. that well. She wobbled around the jaw and fell in. Well done there. Yeah, very well done. So Clint leads by six frames to two. Luke really needed that frame there. Sure did. You were saying before he'd uh, he'd love to string a couple together here and get some momentum. Absolutely. Back to the Kelly Foster match. Ryan the yellows. Playing the face double into the corner. Hasn't got that in there really tight. And he could be in a little bit of trouble here. He's left young Benny a chance to run one into the corner and cut one back over the pocket that he just tried to cover with the fa face cut. Cover that, or is he going to blast that yellow out? Do you think? No, good I think Ben will cover this one, mate. No, oh, he's blasted he's it. Oh, he's the, got hey, one. these young fellas. Hey, hey. the youth. The youth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Those old blokes would have run it over the hole. Oh, oh dear, he's cobbled it. Rush he's left himself a Chinese snooker and cobbled it, trying to play yeah. a forcer. Ron giving Ronnie a big chance at closing this match out now. Okay, I'll hand over to Matt Bolton now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gordon. Thanks, Dan. <coughs> Welcome Are to the commentary, uh, Matthew Bolton. How are we? We're over Dan? a little lost now. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Been absolutely. outside, slapped Got yourself to... around a bit. Nah, mate, nah, all <laughs> good. Uh, Sacco too good today, so I made a few mistakes and... Um, Steve did the business, so good on him and good luck to him for the rest of it. Um, Ron on the hill here, mate. Yes, Ron's on the hill. Yep, chance to finish right now as I come into the commentary position. And he that's is. A1. He has played that very well. Absolutely. Clint Kapler going well on the, uh, oh, in the final of the winner's Clint's side. playing very well. 6-1 up at the moment. Nicely done by Ron. Six two, sorry. <laughs> Straightforward black for the match, yep. and Ron stays in the tournament. Do not write him off, even though he's got to win in a number of matches in a row. Another race yep. to nine, and then two All races right. to eleven so if he wants to win it. Well done to Ron. Sure, most people that he's going to get better. The long goes in. Oh, and the we've first, just seen first bit of we don't emotion see of. we've seen. The microphone's the... picked it up, but a bit of emotion from Kelly. And he's just walking past me now, folks. And I, what I just said about him getting better the longer he's in the tournament, what I've just seen, look out, everyone else. 
That is, Look out, everyone. The boy is pumped. Mr. That, Kelly. That is something you, great don't, to see. you don't see often. Is Rob that is being great emotional. To see. He is walking around fist pumping and giving himself the big talk. That's my highlight of the weekend, actually. That, that's, seeing that. That's something I've never actually seen before. Yep. He might not lose another frame today, Dan, no, after could, seeing that, mate. Yeah. Everybody else should be worried now. Yep. Right, back to the action here with Clint and Luke. Yeah, Luke on the reds. Yeah. Hasn't quite yeah, covered probably, that. Uh, that was a big shot. He probably would have had a shot on the black if he potted that first ball, because the rest of them were there. Black's a little bit tied up down here with that yellow, but he can get on the other side of it. Yep. Off the... Off the Anyway, he's not at the table, so. But so far this weekend, Dan, you'd have to say that Clint Kapler's been the best player in the tournament. I would, yeah, you know, he's, he's uh, most consistent. He's really playing well, full of confidence. Didn't quite get underneath that. No. Let Luke back to the table. What Luke really needs to do, with Gordon, I was just saying, he needs to get a couple of wins in here and try and get some momentum going. Yeah, definitely, and he can reel games off Luke for sure. Yeah. Um, he has got all the shots and he does see and create a lot of opportunities. Clint won't be doing anything drastic now that he's got a nice little buffer. He's a, he's a smart operator, Clint. Uh, yeah, he is. But these are the half chances that Luke's got to take. Yeah. He's leaving this red up near the black end of the table till last, I'd say, and trying to stun across the other side down. So three balls and then a big positional shot for the black. Definitely. Half a chance, and he's 6-2 down. He's got to take it, and he hasn't. And that hasn't fallen. I think he's going to be overly happy with he himself here. pot that. to be able to get down on the ball cushion here Dan is, but he can't really offer positional shot so he's gonna make things a bit better for himself here maybe well well he's managed to tie the black up if nothing else yeah he has tied the black up Looks like he's going to have a crack at it, unless he's going to roll this red over the pocket. But I'd say, if he's going to attack, he'll probably play this now, because he's got balls up there that he can play down, that so he if can he can pump this in and move the black, this is a, this is a big shot. Probably would have liked to have run into the black itself, so whilst he's made it available, it's not easily available at all. No, he's going to uh, need that big position shot now to come on the right hand side of that black.
that's the other thing, Dan. It's tough to, when he's leaving that other ball right near the pocket, the ball near the pocket, their position, you'd rather a ball in the middle of the table to control the white. So yeah. this is, um, this looks like deep screw directly into the cushion and back towards this corner of the table. Yeah, get it back to where he's... Some screw and left-hand side on the cue ball here. Won't want to catch it too thin. I'll tell you what. Perhaps that's not too hard into those yellows. He's potted the yellow, I think, but no, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. He's, he's in. covered himself. He's a little bit unlucky. He's hit that very sweet to control the screw and the side yep. going straight into the cushion and come back on that line. He's hit yeah, it really sweet, he's but he's just... Um, left himself a total too. Now. Yeah, well, it becomes unlikely to win the frame from here. A little something special oh, for here little we Foster go. here. A bit of zip and spin into the cushion. Straight into the other pocket. Not happening for him. No, no, no. Two shots from here, you'd have to back clean him. Yeah. But you'd, even if Clint does finish the game here, which you'd expect him to with two shots, I still wouldn't write Luke off at 7-2 no, no, no. down. No. Still a lot of uh, lot of room in this match. Doesn't take much for these uh, fellas to run three or four frames yet. Consolation matches in full swing as well down on the other tables. Yes. So a thousand dollars up for grabs there. Eight hundred. Sorry, I'm just being corrected. Make it a thousand. I'll chuck in the other two hundred, Tanya. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no. <Nah. coughs> They're in full swing. Some t top line up there too. Some uh, some big names in the consolation. Best of seven knockout. Back to the main event, Clint with two shots to clear up and take a handy lead. Yep. to Gordon just before Matt I'm going to be dirty if Clint wins this why is that down? because he went so cheap in that cow I said to Tammy <laughs> I, I was going to go in and then Jimmy went in at 150 and I thought <laughs> oh you can have him for that and afterwards I thought no I should have gone to 200 and got Clint because I, I like the way he plays he was a great buy and he's been putting a lot of time into his pool yep. and he went over and played in the big guns over east so good long match experience there and uh a lot of people that have been around pool a while down over here are saying that's the best they've seen him play um, ever pretty much this weekend yeah. so far. Composure and... Um, yeah, a few weeks ago he played that uh, cash match against Ronnie. Yeah. The, uh, Ron was nowhere near his best but Clint played really well. Really smart, intelligent player. Yep, he's, uh, he's certainly, certainly going well at the minute. But things can change quickly. Oh, that's, yeah. It's sometimes hard to go at your best for two days, so, but hopefully you can keep his form up. Big double. Big double, no good. No good. He's needed another visit here, but you would think. <coughs> right, he's looking down there, I'm not sure why. It should be game over. Maybe just checking those yellows go past each other. Nicely played there by Clint. Let's roll that one through.
Pretty textbook finish here. Yeah, just one good shot required here, Dan. Tester, but he pumps it in with full confidence. Yes. Back of the pocket. Good to see. Definitely no issues with his confidence in his own ability now. He's uh, well, he's looking very focused around the table as well. <coughs> yeah, nice little finish there by Clint. Takes it to a 7-2 lead. Shout out to the uh, sponsors while we're waiting for the boys to have a bit of a break. Privacy Fencing, fencing Perth. Aluminium Slat Fencing Specialists. Mr. Billiards, Braden Desenza. Miss Q's Pool Room where the event's being played. And of course Cubal TV taking care of all your live streams for the folks at home. Great effort by everyone involved to get this up and running and hopefully it's an annual event. And uh, yeah, as you can see on the screen there, Ron Kelly and Steve Saxon. Yeah, another, to the table. another big matchup. Great matchup. Race to nine. Steve full of confidence today. He's had two big wins over Paul Dickinson and then myself yep. today, so... And Seems Steve to be playing in, quite well. He is playing well. A bit of a confidence <coughs> player, but when he gets going, Steve's got all the shots and uh, capable of beating anyone that's left in this tournament. Coming in with a bit of match time under his belt too, and he's just uh, recently, be recently been to the Worlds and stuff. Absolutely match practice under the belt and it'll be interesting to see how Kelly starts this match after his, after uh, his little uh, outburst of confidence yeah no, a happy boy Looks uh, try a break. Clint's away on the reds. Looks to have a reasonable sort of a spread here. Yeah, not easy by any means. A little bit of work to do, uh, but... Uh, however, he'll have a crack at them because the yellows aren't flush at all. Although, in saying that, there's a ball near the middle, Dan, that's um, easy to pot to disturb the two that are on the side rail there. Yeah. And one good shot could open it right up and uh, get position on the black and have a shot on the black. 
he can go uh, for this for sure. Should be able to get the position for that ball in the middle to do that right now, Matt. And similar to last frame down, like I said, these are the half chances he's got to start getting. Has he got and he's yeah, played that, that very played well. Down. That's oh, all but perfect. Punch through this pot in the middle. Yeah, well he just wants to catch the outside half of the first yellow, and that'll cannon the white onto the other yellow as well. I'm pretty sure that's what he was lining up there. Yeah. So he'll flip that one out to the middle and one down towards the top end of the table. He just hasn't quite got the not, first ball thick enough. Not quite. He's just caught the first Could've ball done with an extra thin, half and that an would have been perfect. Another half an inch off that rail would have been nice. Yep. He has got a line to this opposite corner, yes, if he needs it. Which is the way he's going to head by the looks of his uh, body language. Yeah. Well, he has got balls. These other three balls are all in positions that he can use to nudge that one that's near the middle pocket if he has to do down. Yeah. So he's ball in the middle with an angle to roll through to the one near the middle pocket and move that. Yeah, he can do it off either of those balls, I think. He's just weighing up his option on which one appeals to him more. Yep. Done that he's very, it very well. It's a fantastic shot. Position still a little bit tricky here, Dan, because he does need to be sort of straight on this last yellow or to the right hand side of it as we look at the screen to be able to have a, sh a decent shot on the black yeah, that's he right. doesn't want to be on the left hand side of that yellow no, this at all you don't want to have to be negotiating through those red balls absolutely at all absolutely not so I'm just going to play a little screw shot and he's a little bit short it's a bit short shorter than he would have liked to make things yeah. a bit easier might have to push through this white off the bottom rail maybe and yeah, play a bit of a uh, check a on it. It's shot if he decides to play that. He's oh, he's decided to come around and he might be a bit short there. To, maybe tried to play in that, that gap between the lines of bread, so to speak. But to stun off two cushions and out a little bit of maybe I'm not sure he got down and played it quick and it was by no means mm. it was an awkward shot and he had sleep in himself and try and sit on the back of the black yeah. here try and get nice and deep underneath that black not too much That's pace on that uh, not a good shot no, way too strong there and again these little half chances <coughs> Luke has had a couple of chances, but they're by no means easy. No. At all. But they are the... The ones that you got to put away. If you decide to go for the game, you really need to be taking those chances.
I don't know, there from Clint that shot out. No. I mean, I think he might have been a little bit careless there. Thinking that he has got so many options with the black where it is, so he's just going to play the snooker. Not a bad way to go, he's uh, definitely promoted that ball. Yeah, his other option was to roll the red on and off the cushion and under it, but that's probably the option he's taken. There's a better shot, it's opened the game right up. And the other way, he would have still had a ball near the cushion and Luke could have rolled onto it, so yeah. it wouldn't have made much difference. It's tougher to get a safety here from Luke. It's a good shot. Oh, he's done that well. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's oh, lifted no, the double. He hasn't. He's lifted the double. Yeah. Another inch on that white wall. It's not straightforward by any means. He does need to create a bit of an angle here. And I'll back him to get this down. Yeah. Oh, no. Another chance See, going back in there. Touch softer down, that goes in. Mm. Well, not if he hits it in the same place, because it'll create a different angle, but you know what I mean. I know what you mean, Matt, yeah. He, um, it's a common mistake putting too much power on those yeah, doubles. Yeah, you give yourself a better chance. You're going 100% for the shot, so... But he might have felt comfortable playing it like that. However, you'd think Clint would mop him up from here. And eight two is a long way back. Yeah, that's a that's a fair sort of a deficit. Yeah, not over by any means, but it's a long way back. Oh, it's nearly jumped out of the pocket, which we haven't seen all weekend down. So it's nice to see one not drop jump out. Yeah. The table's playing beautifully. Yeah, there's been no complaints with the tables here at Miss Q's. No. First frame in the uh, final on the loser's side of the draw. Yeah, it's a messy looking table. Or oh, the semi final of the loser's side, Dan, I think. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's semi final of the loser's side. The winner of Ron Kelly and Steve playing the loser of this match. So, <coughs> Kelly Osako, one will be out, one will be in. Mm. And we'll be down to three. Yep. It's not easy with the small white ball, the two cushions, big run through, you've really got to hit them sweet. Any tension in their arm or anything down and you won't get there, so he's just under hit it a fraction, but he should be okay. Probably over hit that a fraction as well. So two good shots required. Say a screw deep into the side cushion down and back across here. Yep. Yep. Done well. Pretty nicely. Doesn't want to be too close to the side cushion, and he's almost on the side cushion. So this is this is no gimme at all. Love to have been a few inches off the cushion and almost right dead straight. Potty would have been happy with. But he's 
he's eating that up. He's full of confidence. Yep. He goes 8 to 2 in front. It's a handy lead. Sure is 3 to go. And massive favourite now. There's a good overview of the room here for the folks at home. Good setup here at Miss Q's. Dan climbed down through the roof late last night to get a camera up there. Yep. Do any Spider-Man act? Yeah. Right. Here's a look at the uh, Ron and Sacco table. Oh. oh, Steve with a bit of a miss there. Steve Saxon being recorded, so they'll be uploaded a little bit later. No live action on it, but will be uploaded. So, but we will give you regular updates and keep you posted as to what's happening over there. All right, so Clint's looking to make a good start on this frame as well. Yeah, 8-2 lead. The screen says 7-2, but it's 8-2. This is the start of the 11th frame. Dan gets the subtle hint nice, and goes nice, straight uh, to the nice, mouse. <laughs> nice subtle hint there. <laughs> Dan, we need something where the players just push something, and I don't know nothing about technology, but push a button and it does it for you instead of having to click every frame. But that's the work that, uh, uh, yeah, that, that will be coming next year. <coughs> Now that I suggested it, <laughs> no, no, I'm sure not. Yeah. Oh, really? There we go. Technology doesn't exist, Dan says, but uh, he'll probably invent it, this man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone out there listening wants to donate $50,000 to Dan to uh, sort that technology out? That's it. I think you're selling him a bit cheap, myself. <laughs> to do here. He needs to find a good way. The two reds next to each other down. The one on the left hand side there. If he can get it on the middle on in the on that ball in the center pocket, he'll be able to disturb his other red and that yellow. But it's not it's the wrong side of this red to be able to get there. Unless he screws hard around the back of that yellow but pumps it round to try and come back through the middle of the table and down into the gap. Yeah, it looks like he's going around. Oh, and he's pumped it straight into that corner bag. Two shots for Luke, so <coughs> really must get a frame back here. He's got to. Yep. He's got to make something I'd happen now. Probably screw into. The, he may disturb that yellow now. Oh, he's not caught it, but as much as he like, but it helps a little bit. Mm, still got a bit to do here because that. Yellow closest to the centre spot doesn't go past the red. It has. Things just turning a little bit awkward for him. And that's what happens when you don't take enough chances. He's looking at. Steve Saxon with a good chance to go one nil up on the other table against Ron. Two balls over the pocket and the black in the middle of the table. Yellow doesn't pass. 
Here we go. Sacco with the pot. Oh, he's left himself a bit straight on that black. Probably should have, but he should still pot this. Back today, excellent potter. Good snooker player. Straight in the middle of the pocket. One to Super Steve. Luke's still trying to figure out his uh, options here. Play this under the black, kiss the black out, and move his yellow. Oh, no, he doesn't oh. worry about going near the black. Fine to the middle and yeah, try around. and come back around. Could have needed a bit good more on that. However, it's still quite a good shot now. He's left himself a shot. He's going to run into. He's left a well, choice of two yellows, but it's so take the one as we look on the left. Yeah. Nicely played. Very nicely played. Here in the background, the young angles was just uh, three one down in the consolation and really ran three away. frames. Oh, did he? Yeah, uh, angles, take yeah. a four three. Dangerous player, Luke Angles. He's very dangerous player. Can rattle off frames quickly. Yes, he can. Mm. Luke and Frost has done this well. Eight hundred dollars in the consolation. One black, human shot. Luke Looks gets one on the board. Takes it to 8-3. Flicking over to Ron Kelly and Steve Saxon again. Frame 2. Race to 9 on the loser side. Has to get into the grand final on the loser side. Little shot there by Sacco. Yeah, not an easy out from him, but he's uh, having a go. Well, he needs to pull up a couple of big shots here. Yeah, I think he's, uh, he's come up a bit short on that one. He himself a double on the last ball. And But that's the way he's been playing all day, he's having a go and he's been getting them. Just like that. Just and like that. An and a snapping of a shot from position Steve, shot. Hey, the things that happen when you run them with confidence, eh? Yeah, well, that's the thing, Dan. It does. It's hard for players to play really well over a couple of days, and I think Steve's uh, getting better today from what I've seen. So you must give him a chance. He goes 2-0 on Ron, and back to frame 12 in the winner's 
Rovers. Sammy, this is to get to the main grand final. And give yourself two cracks at it. Yes, that's right. Five that's the important bit. So. All right. Clint's managed to cover that corner bag there, and he hasn't really left. Luke, a great deal to get started on. Except for the fact that that yellow goes straight in that that white's on. Looking at it from behind here, it'll just catch that right hand jaw. Yeah, he can make that. He Even can definitely he make that. Off, he can um, get a start on that. Although they're very close, he can turn it a little bit. Well, this going could hard go on it. Like yep. that. Hasn't got enough contact on it. <coughs> two shots here for Clint. He'd love to have two shots when he got to the black, because that's the problem at the moment. Just getting a note passed across from the lovely Tanya Briggs, winner of the ladies tournament. Who wants to say hi to Jolene and Chris? She knows you're watching, guys. Why don't you grab the microphone at the commentary and say hi yourself, Tanya? You know? She's a bit shy. A couple of drinks in her and she'll be alright. <laughs> so Clint will pot this, move the yellow, and he'd love to be able to pot the next round. As I said, he'd love to have two shots when he gets to the black. Yeah, so definitely. this is a pretty important shot in winning the frame at this visit, and that's Ooh. no joy. I don't think. Yeah, he's left uh, himself a bit tight on really that. Really needed to get the yellow on the outside half a little bit or a bit the other way. He's still going to have a go. Yeah, I thought he might think about potting this one over the pocket down here and keeping two and trying to get on that ball a bit later. Oh. Uh, mm. I'm not sure if he was on it, but I think he was. He had another red over this pocket, one in the middle of the table that he could have definitely used to get position on that ball, but he decided to go for it. Gonna have to do it the hard way and make sure of the uh, black now, isn't he? Yeah, well he can. I mean, he can roll the black down this cushion here uh, if it comes to that to cover the <coughs> cover the yellow anyway, and just leave it in the pockets. That's going to make things difficult yep. if Luke comes back to the table. Now he could actually, if he's on this one over the pocket. No, he's taking the one in the middle. <laughs> checking this, he wants to looks like he wants to land to give himself enough room to slide up past that yellow and into that black. Don't think that shot's on. If it is, it might be, actually. It might just be able to catch the outside edge of the black. It. It's got to be perfect. He can get the other side of the black. He can play this side of it and roll it up to the other pocket where the yellow is in Bork. Oh, he's tried to promote it, but he's it's well, come up a bit shallow. He did definitely have the angle to get past there. <coughs> he just needed a fraction more pace running into the black and it would have been lovely. Knocked it over the middle pocket. Now he's got a tricky little one. He hasn't hit it either. He really needed oh. to make sure he gave it a chance to get to the pocket. A little bit too hard. It's the same result. It's a bit too soft really, so... 
but not easy when the cue ball's that close to the no, object board. Right. And you are trying to have some cover over the pocket as well. Hard to control the touch. So, job's on here for Luke. Certainly is. It's definitely there. Let's see if we can put it all together. Yeah, Luke. Pull two back, go from a six frame deficit to four. Getting the job done here. Reasonably simple little out. Nice little angle for the drop this one in the middle. Slide this one across. done. John's going to jump back on the commentary for a bit. Matt's just going to uh, have a quick break. Luke, uh, Luke closes out that frame, takes himself to 8-4. Knock the uh, knock the last two games off to reduce that deficit a little bit. Hello, everybody. I'm back after losing 4-3 to Luke Anglesey after being three. Oh, it was you, was it? After being three one up. Oh, he came over and told us he had to do it the hard way. Yeah. Three one up, and then I should have won. He, he potted out to make it three all, and then. I took, took both bottom bags and he had about five reds over it and I played a shot and it was a foul snooker. I didn't even realise the black made it a foul snooker and we potted out from there. It was pretty lazy by me, but... <sighs> well, uh, these things happen. Yeah. These people need me to commentate anyway. <laughs> Steve Saxon's the man on form today. Huh? He's, he's on fire. Beat Dicko 9-3. Yep. Got the same scoreline with uh, Matt Bolton. Matt, yeah, he's on fire. Clint's hitting him really well. I've got him in the Calcutta. That's a good shot there by Ron. Ron should finish this off. Yeah, he should do. Alright, I'm going to jump out and let Matt Bolton back in. Enjoy it. A pleasure to be back with the dulcet tones of Scottish John Hardway, <laughs> who's received big raps on your commentary, mate. Really? From everyone. Really? Yeah. Shame I think I you're a natural. Shame I don't get big raps on my pool game. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I just lost 4-3 to Luke Anglesey after being 3-1 up. Not very well, many people could do that. <laughs> well, Angles is dangerous. He is dangerous. Very. Kelly looking like tying things up here at 2 2. We're talking nice. before, John. Did you see the show of emotion from Ronnie after his last I win? heard it. Yeah, no. You heard it. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So that people know what we're talking about. I didn't about. know he spoke or anything, and then all of a sudden he <laughs> unleashed that. <but. laughs> the bug is back. Yeah, that's what, that's what I said. Someone's got the hunger back. <laughs> Look out, everybody. Look out, Australia. <laughs> I just walked past Luke on the way to the men's room, and he was also giving himself a little G up after pulling two back. Yeah. So yeah, the boys are into it, which is great. Great for WA pool. And, uh, you know, real good 
not a huge crowd here. It's mainly players, but the room's packed with the consolation going on on all the tables. And yeah. A good 20, 30, well, probably 30 or 40 people standing around watching as well. It'll keep slowly so, getting busier. Yeah. yeah. yeah both room of for these a late night, that's for sure. Both of these boys will definitely want to win. So you've got that double chance in the final, you know? Well, that's big, isn't it? Huge. It gives you a break too, so you're... Um, you're going to be a little bit fresher, you would think, if it came to that second match, than someone who's played every round all day. You are going to get a round off. Yeah. Steve Saxon seems to be the man on form today, but... He is. Steve, things have been going for Steve today. Yeah. So Polish Dick off and yourself off. And he certainly did, and fair play to him. Confidence player, Steve, so very, very dangerous when he's feeling good yes. and seeing things quickly. Very consistent. He seems to always be in amongst it, you know? Yeah, it'd be nice for him to put a big title next to his name. Yeah, that's true. Because he hasn't, hasn't won a big tournament, so to speak. But he's certainly more than capable of doing it. Yeah. Good snooker player too, right? Yeah, Steve's a good snooker player. He plays play comp? He plays play snooker comp? He does, he plays snooker comp, absolutely. Steve would be in the top, uh, top five players in WA at ah, snooker. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's heading over for the National Snooker next weekend at RACV Club, which Cubal TV will be doing. Yep. So, the most prestigious event on the Australian snooker calendar for the year, you the National Championship. You going yourself? Yes, I'll be going over for that. Steve from WA, Ben Judge is also going over. Yep. So, red hot field of players. And Cubal TV, I think Dan will be there on the Sunday, is that right? Doing the semis and the final. Of the National Snooker. Your favourite? Your favourite for it? No, not at all. No. no, it's about 30 blokes in front of me. Really? I'll take the pressure off myself there, John. Yeah. So, no, that will be, uh, you're always in with a chance if you play well. Yeah. So, certainly be just hoping to play well. It's a good shot there, my friend. Good shot from Clint. He's, on, he's the man at form. He's brilliant yesterday. He's blew, blew people away yesterday. He is just full of confidence and he's been putting the time in and he seems to improve mentally just that probably 10% that he needed to in terms of not getting a bit jumpy. He's used to maybe just tighten a little bit at certain times on certain shots but he looks to be keeping his cueing together under pressure as well which is a sign that he's worked hard on that side of things to improve his game and he's definitely gone up a level from what I've seen in competition as well and that's 110% credit to him. That is just perfect. He beat uh, Ron 11-6 and Ron reckons that Ron didn't play a bad shot. He was, no. he was like, he could do it differently. He just couldn't stop him. Well, that's, that's fantastic and that's good that the standard's being set at that level for pool full stop. So. And that one in the Calcutta, which is even better. Well, being a Scotsman, you will be <laughs> praying. Not that you actually win the Calcutta, you just don't want to lose 150. Yeah, well, Lee Fair's got all my money now, so um, I'm Lee, yeah, you really relying on Clint to pay my rent this week. Yeah. How much has Lee taken off you, John? 250. 250. Did you not play him at the LPQs as well? Nah. No, I played, sorry. I played Jason Kelly at the LPQs and he was 10 5 up and I beat him 11 10. Hope Jason's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he may well be being one of Luke Foster's close friends. Yeah, Gerald. I think he will be listening. Yeah. He'll be a bit red faced though after I just said that. It is a Sunday, but he might not be out of bed. Yeah, all right, church. <laughs> I might save up the pennies and um, challenge Lee to one of them $1,000 matches here on Friday night. Is that a might or you will, John? Oh, well, the viewers want to know. Once, once you've got, got the money. money. Okay. Once and could we, when, have a, could, we have a, <laughs> could we have an approximate timeline on what you might think that might be? We'll wait to see what Clint does. <laughs> Clint, Clint's the man with my money. <laughs> <laughs> and Sacco's just played a huge shot on his second last ball on the other table. Nicked one into the middle, screwed off the side cushion. Perfect for his last ball. On and off the cushion for the black. Clint two frames away from playing in the grand final and giving himself two chances and would thoroughly deserve to be in that position 
off the police bike. Who won out of um, Alan Brown and Mark Carroll? Do we know? Alan Brown Alan. four three in the consolation, and Alan Brown and Gordon Whitaker going at it at the moment in the second round. Oh, three all, if you don't mind. Another decider. Alan started finding his straps a little bit later on yesterday, but yeah, he struggled late. struggled at the start of the weekend and I flopped got him eleven seven in the first round. Well, Johnny, you are and I bought him in the Calcutta. And you say you can't play pool. And I bought him in the Calcutta. <laughs> Brilliant. I love just wasting my money. <laughs> bought Brownie for one ten and Catler for one fifty in the first round. I played Brownie in the second round. I played Catler. Yeah, good buys. And for those listening. If you're working out what odds that is, there's a bit over two grand, I think, for the winner of the Calcutta. So Johnny's got about 18 to 1 and 16 to 1 roughly on Kapler and Brown. Two good purchases. I had to lie down to Kapler, didn't I, after beating Brown in the first round? Yeah, uh, far more value there than, <laughs> uh, than Ron or myself in the Calcutta. Yeah, you were way too much. Especially me now that I'm out. There yeah. wasn't much value there. Yeah. So yeah, I've heard that Michael Ballam and his wife have got a voodoo doll they, of you that they are stabbing them. Well, I, I was actually, I think that what caused I'm that scared of Michael Ballam. So <laughs> if I lose, I think it might have affected me. I'll have to tell him not to buy me. Yeah. But no, nah, top bloke. And I did apologise, John, yep. for the 660 that I yep. cost him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Brownie's just got up 4-3 over Gordon Whitaker in to the consolation. To the Golden Oldies? Uh, yes. Uh, maybe cruising on into the quarterfinals, maybe? Yeah, it must be. Eight. Quarter. Yep. Yep, quarter. Who does he play next, Tanya? Luke Anglesey. Alan Alan Brown. Brown. Luke Anglesey must be a good player. He knocked me out. <laughs> well, Brownie's probably out there, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you beat Brownie and Anglesey beat you, yeah. so that's how it works, isn't yeah. it? Probably no point in playing it. That's right. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Okay. John just hoeing into a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Being a Scotsman, he's probably, well, they probably give us a hot dog for doing the commentary, so he probably I gets actually, his lunch while he's commentating, <laughs> so he doesn't have to pay for it. I got this off of Simon Gray because he bit me a hot dog that I wouldn't get to eat against Lee Thayer and I got to eat. Eight exactly. Yeah. Well, well that was it. Well, that was all, all I wanted, really, isn't it? Yeah. Once I got to eat, that was me. Yeah. You'd rather the hot dog than the 250? Absolutely. Good lad. Just to prove Simon Gray wrong. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so, Luke will be wanting to pot this straightish red and screw back and leave himself dead straight, as close to straight as he can on the other one, John, to play position for this red in the in the right-hand pocket. Yep. He needs to be over that side of the table. And Ooh, he's, he's good back overdone it. Ooh. Really overdone it. He might, hang <coughs> the, he might hang this now. He might have to hang this. Unless he, is he looking at clip, clipping the yellow out of the way? Yeah, Big shot. It is, but... He's got a good angle to play it. Do you try to clip the yellow out of the way? Well, there's a little bit of pool left in this frame all of a sudden. It's not a bad leave. I'll just pass you over to Marchy while I eat my lunch. Johnny eat his hot dog. <laughs> yes, a bet winning hot dog off Simon Gray. <laughs> Normally Simon Gray is pretty good at uh, predicting things. Uh, no, he'll be dirty he lost a hot dog, that's for sure. <laughs> John's priority is a bit wrong though, trying to go for the hot dog rather than the 250, but... Uh, he's a man of morals. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to prove his mate wrong. Yeah. Simon just standing with us at the moment, and uh, 
I can see the look of disgust on his face from having to buy that hot dog. <laughs> Sudden, a little bit of atmosphere in the yeah, room. A couple of. Uh, <laughs> That's always what happens when you get a couple of good games happening. Yeah, no, there'll be a little bit of shouting for later on with some people maybe invested on matches or Calcutta pickups or friends, yeah, etc. Right. <laughs> so pressure will be on as the games go longer, but it's going to be a long night. It does become a little bit of a test of uh, your fitness slash mental fitness Marcy as well yeah, these right. these uh, big tournaments for the guys in the business end I know last night a lot of players got tired towards the end of the night and it did affect their pool yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely think one thing that I noticed by um, coming down watching uh, today as opposed to watching some of the guys playing from last night you know the game was definitely a little bit changed today yep. rather than yesterday absolutely um, one of the games was actually watching uh, your potting <laughs> was a bit off today. <laughs> yeah, no, I missed a couple of pots. Um, but, it, yeah, Steve played very well. And, um, yeah, things seemed to go nicely for Steve and they were there to get and he got them. And yeah. I uh, I was either awkward or missed one. So, that's pool. That's it. And it's good that there's a lot of good players who can beat each other. It makes the tournament exciting for everyone. Three all with Kelly and Saxon. Yeah. Oh. Okay, he's done shot. very well there. Excellent containing shot. However, you'd think that Clint would be able to hide somewhere up in the bork area. Just having a look where he wants to be. But Luke's going to be under pressure next shot, you would think. He's been holding very good form this, um, this whole game. So. Uh, he's been the best player here this weekend yeah, so definitely. far, without a question. That's a great shot by Clint. A yeah, bit he's... Than what he wanted. I'd say Luke will just roll up on the left-hand side of this red here and try and snooker him across the bottom yellow on the right-hand side there, the bottom one. If he can snooker him on that then he'll be snookered on the red, the yellow above it and he can't cut that ball yellow into the middle so he'll cut off two of the three balls here and the other one's an incredibly difficult pot if he plays that shot. It doesn't look like he is. Maybe he's nicking it in. He's cutting it in and he's missed it. A little bit deceptive on the camera there but he's had a crack at it. I'm actually a little surprised that he went for that because he wasn't going to leave himself on that another red. Well, there was a chance going up and down the table, but he did need a lot of luck. The white was flying, so yeah. he did need it. He was going like over that side of the table, so there was a chance that he may have had a shot on it, but he would have needed a little bit of help from the gods to have that <laughs> shot, Marshy. So, chance for Clint to tend 10 4 and highly unlikely that the way he's going, that he wouldn't wrap it up shortly right. thereafter. It's Rattles it a, in. Definitely a man on a mission. You nearly miss that. Just having a look here, he's... He's okay. Yeah. Bit of setting on the camera. They're trying to work out if that black goes past that red. Yeah, not sure. I doubt it. Just looking from here, but if he loads it up with a fair bit of size, you should be able to get back around to the bike. He is having a look at that now, so maybe it does go. 
it does go, then it's should be an easy positional position, and it does. And he's played it. Maybe it doesn't so. go. <laughs> he's looking, 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 but if he's looking that hard, maybe it only goes in the outside half of the pocket or close to the pocket. He's cutting it in the opposite pocket. He's missed it by a mile. Well, he made a bit of a meal of that with three easy balls left. Yeah. Just uh, missed the position on that middle pocket to give him a nice easy fun on the black. Uh, yep. He probably could have cut that finer into the middle of the pocket and just come back down past the black and had it into the middle pocket or worst case scenario, the other pocket. But he was going to struggle to get the angle off two rails to come yeah. bring the black back over into this left-hand top pocket. So I thought it was going to be a hard try to, try to come off the two rails with a fair bit of side to try and kick it back around. At least Luke's got the, uh, the snooker. Clint will play cushion first here and try and judge a, judge the angle to knock that black over the pocket, I think. He could come off the cushion and try and sit in behind it. Looks like that's the option. And he is going to play that. Yep. Needs to hit it good. Yeah, that was a great shot. Yeah, probably not great. He, to gain any advantage there, he probably needed to snooker him. Luke's going to play the same, similar shot to what he played last time. Uh, Clint's going to have a similar shot next shot. Clint just cut off the angle there. No total snooker this time, I don't... Say, no, no total snooker. Total snooker. We can see the angle from here. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely a much better shot from Luke. We can just bring the black out and put it in quite an attacking position and leave Luke on the top cushion here. And he puts him under big pressure. He would have a tricky red into the middle that he could roll in if he played that shot. But he's going to have... Clint just brings this blacker six inches to a foot out off the cushion and puts him on the balk rail. Well, he's decided not to really attack with the black. Interesting. I think Clint really needed to advance his position there, last yeah. shot, on that black, and maybe play the shot I mentioned. Not that I'm questioning Clint, he's playing great pool, just probably it's could have put on. Luke under big pressure bring putting that black in a potable position. Because yeah. right now Luke can just play the patience game. Paul Dickinson getting in the corner of Ron Kelly there. <laughs> Shouting out a bit of encouragement. Ron and Steve, three all. And he left Luke a chance there. See, he was leaving him a much sharper shot if he played my shot beforehand, yeah, Marcy. Right. And now... You definitely say you just played into Luke's hands there. Now Luke looks like he's going to have first shot on the black. It's not going to be easy, but... He's held that nicely, actually. 
It's almost potted that a little straighter than the middle of the pocket, Marshall. You could keep the white ball on a, a little bit, but closer to the to the black. All or nothing. Nothing. Ten four, Clint. And you think that puts to bed John. any chance that he's got? He'd be disappointed with that. Just the story of the match, really. We've That's been watching right. it, commentating on it for a while, Marcy, and just Luke's missed a couple of half chances, and yeah, things have just turned a fraction awkward at other times, and yeah. uh, it's enough for a six-frame lead for Clint, who's been overall pretty solid. He has given Luke a couple of half chances, but as I say, they just haven't been taken. That's and right. And so that was a classic example there. Absolutely. I've been playing a very technical game uh, this weekend. I've been uh, watching a fair few of his games, and he hasn't been going uh, for match outs or anything like that, which is sort of showing how um, you know, a lot of the other guys are making sure he's capitalising when they can and stopping him when he can't. Yeah, well, my theory, Marcy, is look for the out, and if you can't see that, then worry about something else. And I yeah. think that's the case with most of the top players. That's right. So. Definitely the way that Justin Say showed me when uh, he gave me a few coaching tips and that sort of thing. Justin who? <laughs> Justin. <laughs> yeah, Justin, great player. Rumour has it, Marcy, that he did want to play in this, but due to uh, moving over to New South Wales recently, he was he's no longer classified as a West Australian. So I'm sure they'll want him back if he moves back over here yes. in the state team. They'll quickly <laughs> snaffle him back up, but... Um, The uh, organisers decided that it was WA players only, and whichever way you look at it, he's uh, would have been great, great to have him in the tournament in terms of quality of the tournament. Yeah, that's right. I, I think if they uh, open up a, a big tournament uh, similar to the ones where it's an invitational to to all states, I think uh, it'll be a huge success, especially the way that this one's gone. Absolutely, but certainly great for WA to have a have its own tournament to kick things off, so to speak. That's right, big yeah. events over here, and I'm sure an interstate one will be the next thing to happen. Good shot definitely, there from Luke. Good for Paul, so. Looks like Ron Kelly's about to go four three over Saxon. He has. Tight affair over there. Race to nine, Saxon and Kelly. It's a good shot from Luke. Not playing the pot there. Opening his yellow. Close to killing one of Luke's balls is in the same shot, Marty. And yeah. um, be looking then now to get that his other yellow away from that red and you would think that Clint's balls are still going to be very ordinary so Clint recognizing immediately that he's in big trouble in the frame here and well yeah, he's recognized it straight away and uh, said to Luke there's two shots go out and he probably should is he going to move this one from the red first? He has to, if he's going for it. If, if that uh, ball goes in the middle pocket there, just above the red. I don't think it does. No. And I think the plant's on with these two balls, so he's got to be a bit careful. Yeah, the plant is on. Confirmation from younger brother Ben Foster there. Our eye in the crowd. Helping us out. Well, he's not moving that. He wants a bit of insurance. Okay, he's decided to not to go all out. A snooker player mentality, Marcy coming through <laughs> in me. Let's try and finish the game. Looking to gain control of that pocket. Tricky 
tricky shot to control the pace. Just being shown a replay of shot of the tournament last night on someone's mobile phone and it was from Luke Foster against myself and you'll have to scroll through the cue ball TV videos to my match with Luke and frame number 10 and have a look at the shot he pulls off on the black. I won't describe it, just have a look at it. Gordon Whitaker saying best shot he's ever seen. And he's seen a lot. I heard about it. <laughs> now I've just seen it. That's You've seen it as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought I'd won the game. <laughs> and uh, at 6-3 up to, to go 7-3 instead of 6-4, it was a big frame, and it actually changed the whole momentum of the match. He really, he really started doing some good stuff after that and ended up getting me 11-8, I think. Wow. I can't actually remember. That it was that tired and late at night. <laughs> yeah. No, he played, uh, played well. To perform a shot like that, tired, late at night, that's quite amazing. Yeah. One day I'll get to that level. And that's it, you just got to keep putting the time in and learn from watching these good players, which I'm sure a lot of viewers also do around the country. There'll be all sorts of well, be top players watching this and other people that are still learning about the game. So... It's a great tool for that as well, the cue ball TV matches. I always tried to disturb those balls there and that was always going to be very difficult. Yeah, he's in trouble now and he, um, he did have a chance to have a crack at the game when he had the two shots but he decided not to. More soldiers on the uh, on the battlefield, as, as some people might say. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, and then they say whoever's got more soldiers normally wins. That's right, and um, Clint's definitely a big favourite in the frame here. Yeah, looking to get the snooker and create the two shots and then he'd be going for the game, but hasn't quite got it, I don't think. Just really killing that yellow as well in a way. Yeah. <laughs> but that was about the only part of it he could hit, so. I wasn't sure that I just missed something in that thought process on it. No, nah, that was all the yellow he could hit, and <coughs> he really didn't have a lot more that he could do to help help himself there. The only other thing he could have done was nick it really fine and try and move his yellow and say. So have a go from there with yeah. a, maybe a s trickiest red near the middle pocket, but that's, that's a great shot like this. Yeah, just controlling things nicely. So you'd think you'd have to be killing something here. Oh dear, mate. And 
you think Clint Kaplight is going to be in the grand final last year after this visit to the table? He'll have a nice couple of hour break and two cracks at the cherry in the <laughs> final. So, And he thoroughly deserves it. He has played very, very consistently. Yesterday and today in this match, his first match for the day. Looking at form of some of the other guys, who do you think would probably uh, be someone you put some money on besides Clint? Well, to be honest, everyone who's left in the tournament <coughs> can win the tournament. That's There's right. no doubt about that. However, Clint does have a huge advantage having to win one more match compared to everyone else having to win three matches. That's right, yeah. So. He not only wins this match, he does go big favourite to win the pay. Tanya Briggs just telling me he hasn't won it yet. I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> However, he does have two shots. And it's 10 4. <laughs> <laughs> but anything can happen. Though. No, anything can happen, absolutely. Tanya, I think you'd get them with two shots from here as well. Yeah. <laughs> Take about half an hour. Take about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only because she was rushing. <laughs> 11 4. <laughs> and a thoroughly deserved victory when he wraps this up. Then she goes, and very, very well played, Clint Kapler. He deserves, he goes to the grand final and deserves to be there. Fantastic play, getting up over Luke Foster. John, John will be very happy with that as well, being, being yes. closer to the money. John was talking about the Calcutta <laughs> while he was on here, and he has got about, I think he's got about 16 to 1 on Kapler with what he's played for him, and yeah. that's a stupid price. That's right. So, that's great value. Guaranteed a profit already, with uh, him being in the final. And we go to the semi-final on the loser's side. The winner of this playing Luke Foster. Big shot from Sacco. He's been getting him. Oh, and every time shot. we switch to him today, he seems to be pulling <laughs> off a big a shot. Double or a triple on yeah, the back. And, and I noticed that against me, Marcy. He was happy to leave a big shot. He was yeah. happy to leave a double or a um, maybe screw into a ball and back off it. And it was working for him. So he can win the tournament also. He's really taken it wrong, Kelly. Kenny at 4-4. Uh, yeah, again, race to nine. It, it's a good distance match, but it's by no means a marathon, so you've got to play well and hope that uh, you can take your chances when you get them because the standard is really seeming to lift as long as this tournament goes. That's right. We were seeing some really good pull. Definitely, uh, we're going to have a great grand final. In off the break, no good there for Ronnie. How are these going to land? Well... The reds look pretty good to me. And Steve just checking if that red to the right bottom of our screen goes past the yellow on the cushion. And if that goes, it's a great chance. Tell you something, we'll take the reds here. I'm going to be mad if you didn't. Uh, fancy stuff here. No, just about controlling the white, really. It shouldn't be any too difficult pots. The one that he'll have to just cut in along the top rail, but you wouldn't think that'd be a problem for Steve. He's playing for it now. Doesn't want to be too straight on it. He's got a little angle, but he might be bridging over the yellow, which makes the shot a little bit harder. 
I'm gonna have to maybe just have to cue this and maybe pump it in a bit, punch it in. It's probably gonna be the hardest ball. Oh, he's cued that really oh, nicely. That Has he got up? And got lovely top spin on the white there. He's on the one in the middle, so just a good positional shot required here. Looking at playing side cushion, top cushion. And leaving himself that gap to play through between the black and the three yellow balls, and he's hit it too thick. I was just about to say he doesn't want to hit this too thick, Marcy, because he could catch the draw, but... Now he's in trouble. Again, if he this one. Yeah, who knows where the wide will end up if he pots this. It's going to be running into the balls and... And you'd think Run would punish him. Yeah, you think that. <laughs> Miracles? Miracles? Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Did you beat Luke? No, I lost. Oh, wait, you're back here. I was 3 <laughs> 1 up and lost 4 3. <laughs> yes, Margie? I'm oh, just no comment to that, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> that was 3 1 up against Luke Anglesey? <laughs> I think that's. I've stunned a little bit. I had. I was, I was a bit of uh, in awe bit. Yeah, 3 1 up and then. Uh, Fair, fair play to him, potted out well to 3 all, and then the last game I had it all tied up and then I stupidly gave him a foul snooker that I didn't even notice. I had both bottom pockets and four of his balls around my, around my ball and uh, I played the black down there and played the black down and left a foul snooker so he could <laughs> pop my ball. Foolish. <coughs> Sacco on reds. He is on reds. He's, um, he was going for an out, uh, accidentally clipped the ball a bit thick there, hit a jaw, and um, now he's in this position. Sacco's going to pot that red in the middle bag where them yellows are. His doubles have been on. This, um, he missed the, uh, the double on the yellow to get on position on the black the previous game. Clint Kapler's in the final with a double chance. I'm very happy about that. Here we go. Oh, Steve just hasn't missed his doubles today. Brilliant shot by Saxon. Shot. Didn't even use the yellow to go in the pocket. Another double, or is he going to cut this? Well, why wouldn't you double it if he's not missing any? <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve will always play the percentages. White's coming back over towards them yellows in the middle pocket, but unless he puts tons of side on it. Double trouble. Ah, oh, he's nowhere near. Missed it by a mile. He just made me try to make me look like a fool when I said he's double. Yeah, I was just going to say, are you, <laughs> are you telling the truth, Margie? <laughs> you think Ron would be able to punish him from here? He yes. does have more soldiers on the battlefield. He's playing a snooker. Something that Wayne Gilmore actually taught me about the soldiers on the battlefield. So. Yeah, he knows nothing about Paul, Wayne Gilmore. <laughs> Luke Anglesey's playing Alan Brown now in the quarterfinals of the Consolation sh Shield. That'll be a good game. My mate Jimmy Searcy's playing Nathan McMahon. That's a oh, huge beautiful hit. Shot. Just got confirmation of the. Consolation Shield, Angles is playing Alan Brown, Lead there is playing Adrian, that's a rematch from yesterday's first round. 
Uh, Jimmy Sirs is playing Nathan McMahon and Stone Stenhouse is playing Rocky. Stone Stenhouse is uh, definitely one of the up and coming uh, juniors. He, he, he beat WA. Dicko in the first round, it was a massive win for Stone. He's a good player. I, I had the pleasure of playing him yesterday, uh, he knocked me out the, uh, the, the losers round. Oh yeah. Um, basically he started off a little bit uh, cold and uh, finished on a massive high. Yeah, he's very good. The next couple of years will be interesting to see how, how he goes, if he takes that next step in his game. Yeah, you just got to basically, uh, you know, he's, he's one of those guys who's always uh, enthusiastic about pool and uh, never has a give up attitude, so. Yeah, well, he loves playing. As long as he keeps that up, I'm sure that he uh, will be uh, you know, in the uh, finals of these sort of competitions. A little bit of coaching from an ex experienced player like Ron or something would be good. So the winner of this plays Luke Foster in a race to nine to get into the grand final against Clint. That's right. And then Clint Kepler still has a double chance, so even if you beat him, you have to beat him again. Ron's going to run this yellow up and... Ron's going to run this yellow up and either cover that top pocket or, or put it in. I think I think he probably probably would, wouldn't mind if it covered. He's played it with a bit of pace. He hasn't got the pot, but he's covered it very well. It's a good hit by Ron, covering that pocket. Tap of the table by Saxon. I reckon he might go for that middle pocket where all the yellows are. Off the off the side row, off the top row, and into the middle. Unless he's going for the double across. He's went to Marcus. He's got, he's it. got it! What a great shot by Saxon. It's unbelievable. At least now he is proving me right that he is getting these. Uh... <laughs> you called them doubles, I call them, call them like quadruples and. <laughs> Oh, basically, he just can't miss. <laughs> that was a great shot, didn't you? He? His face cut it to It's huge. No, that's right. Oh, just, just off, but... Yeah. If he had a trouble double across, he would have... Uh, double kissed. Double kissed it, so he did have to go for the... Saxon bricks, puts one red. It's a good break by Saxon. Didn't give it much. He split well. Saxon giving it everything, but Ron Ron won't won't leave him alone. Two of the most experienced players in, in eight ball pro and WA playing here. Saxon's very experienced as well. well uh, definitely uh, at the beginning of the tournament, Ron was definitely the favourite with uh, his titles that he's had and played at this sort of level. Yeah, but Saxon was been the man on fire today since he got here, smashing Paul Dickinson nine three. And then, um, then who did he play? He beat Matt Bolton. Yeah, then he beat Matt Bolton 9-3. That's, so right. That's probably the most truthful thing you've ever said. <laughs> he's got a chance of an out here. He might have to double his, double one of his yellows. He's kind of now he's that confident on these doubles. He's, he's leaving himself purposely. Yeah, it's it? almost too easy. He might, he might actually um, crack it, crack that hard yellow out that's behind the red. He cuts this yellow into the middle. See what I'm saying? No, he's not going, he's going for that one. Honestly, I think he's going to leave himself in that double. Well, he tried to give it a wee clip, but. 
There's a huge ass from that angle. Yeah, he's gone for the double really though. Do you think he'll get this? Definitely. He's a missed doubles, you tell me. Bang. I think I'd be right again, wouldn't I? Of course. <laughs> The great out. Saxon is on fire. Great Look at that. this. That's a huge out. This is a good master break by Steve Saxon. Somebody call the fire brigade. He puts his black as a 46 4 up against uh, Ron Kelly. Steve Saxon is on fire. That was a great break finish. Ron Kelly respects that kind of stuff. You say well done, mate. What's he got? That's another great break. He's got a couple, couple of trouble balls there on reds. Yeah, he'll go yellows. Yellows look like that would be the better option. Has he, got, he doesn't have a pot on, but does he? He'll have a if he gets a difficult pot uh, off the first shot, he should be alright for the rest of it. But yeah, I can't see what pot he'd go for. I think he's going to have to nominate reds. Yeah. Unless that yellow goes past the other yellow in the middle. Looks like it does. Unless he's going for a plant. He's going for the dead ball. I guess he just proved to us we know nothing about this game. Saxon just taps <laughs> the table, says good shot, mate. That's a great shot. Yeah, still... Hmm, big pocket. A huge ask. Saxon will pot this red. The way he's playing. Oh, he's cut that. Okay. Which red were you talking about? This one. Oh. <laughs> He'll play the plant up the rail now and either um, pot the red or cover the pocket, which would make it life hard for Ron with that yellow there. Covered it. Cover the Excellent shot. With those two reds, are bit difficult. You may find Ron will just put that yellow over the pocket. Can you pot it? Pot the red? Ah. Well, he's got two. Yeah. Steve, Steve's got two reds that um, he's going to need a couple of shots on. He, he might pot it. He'll either pot it or you'll get it out of there now. He'll just like hit it out of there. <laughs> yeah, he just got it out of there. And it comes straight back. Ron Kelly. That's a bad shot. Who's fifth and sixth?
just got confirmation that um, Ben Foster and Matt Bolton finished 5th and 6th. They'll pick up $500 each. The loser of this game that we're watching here will pick up $1,000. Whoever finishes third will be 1500 second 2500 and the winner will pick up 5G. Not bad for a weekend's work. Yeah, pretty good. Quite a good hourly rate really when you think about it. <laughs> Ron going for the double. Ron playing that beautiful, beautiful double. He's on the out here. Might just roll this in. Roll this in the middle. Go for the gives down, him a chance, yeah. down the rail shot. It's pretty straight on too, so I should give him a nice shot on the. Uh, it looks like he might be giving it, giving it a bit. Oh, he said it, giving it a bit too much, but. It looks like that might be a bit too much angle to try and get on another yellow. I think he wanted it about straight, so he could just roll forward. Right, that's right. But um, I'm gonna have to play it a little bit differently now. If anyone can um do something with it, it'll be Ron. He's missed that. I think he was trying to cover that pocket a bit more. Quite possibly, yeah, he's left a, he's left a gap. I mean, Pot, pot has yellow out. Yeah, guys like Neil Roberts and, and, uh, and other names. Yeah. Um, it's just a human. On two shots and just a human error thing, isn't that's it? That's right. It shows that these guys are human. <laughs> I'm not sure if Ron is. <laughs> that's still to be um, proven. Reckon you can hit that. Um, Bottom red in behind that yellow. Punch that yellow out of the pocket. He must not be able to, he didn't even look at it. I think you can go the other way. You just gotta get the position on it. That's a nice shot. That's a great shot. This is the best I've seen Steve Saxon play in a long time. I find that Steve might even go for the out here. Yeah. He's definitely looking at it. I think he's in the zone today, mate. But there's one man, there's one man called Clint Kapler who's been in the zone all day yesterday and all day today. He's got on the wrong side there. Mm, I do. <coughs> Definitely would prefer to be in between the, uh, the yellows and the reds on the uh, left hand side there. I think he could. I don't know if he can cut that. The red closest to the white. I don't know if he can cut that over over to that pocket. I think he can. He's gonna try. Oh, it's a great shot. <laughs> Didn't expect him to pull that. Go for a double somewhere here. Well, he's been doubling. Yeah, it's probably it's prob it. probably a good thing. Looks like he's just trying to get it over the towards the pocket. Really thin, really thin cut. Nah, I, I think he might have been, but just played it wrong. Because he played it heaps of right hand side on it to come off the back cushion and put That's it across. I definitely think he's trying to push it across. I think the white just took the right hand side and moved, played it wrong. Ron will finish this. Well, a huge ass to try and do it from there. You don't get to make more than one mistake against Ron. No.
Yeah, just play this with a bit of dragon right hand side and put the black in the opposite bottom pocket. No drag, just right hand side. Didn't come out quite enough, but it's good enough. Well done, Ron. That brings it back to a four, a five, six, sorry. Sack, so we're just going out for a quick CV. We're just having a couple of minutes break. Can we get an update on the women's score? I was going to say, I'm just trying to find out a little bit about that, actually. We'll just find out what the score is in the women's. I think Susie Gibbs, Susie Gibbs was up 6-2. Susie gives up 7-3 in the $100 money match. I think it might be over a bit quicker than everyone expected. <laughs> While there's no pull on, we'll say thanks to Mr. Billiards for sponsoring the tournament, being the major sponsor. Braden Descends uh, recently purchased it off of Paul Hawthorne. So that's the place to go for all your tables, keys and accessories. Check out their prices now online on their website, www.mrbilliards.com.au. Braden's actually got a nice uh, selection of cues down here. Um, he's got definitely some uh, very nice paragons down here. Yeah, so he's got um, definitely a huge collection of different cues and that's allowing him, for what I've been told, the tables are very, very good up there um, that he did on his offer. I, I, um, I bought one off of Paul before Braden, before Braden took over and yeah, really good tables, really good price and uh, he comes and sets it up for you, levels it if you've got any problems or you move the table, just ring him, he'll come free of charge and level it again for you. Yeah, well, I heard they, they all feature definitely solid timber legs, uh, yep. solid brass pockets, uh, brass and, and top quality English cloth as well, so... Um, it's got a whole wide range of different cloth colours available to choose from. Yep. I think it's, if you're in the Perth area, I think it's about 2,100 for the table delivered and set up, if uh, he told me correctly. But he's got lots of accessories, everything from chalk pool cues to ashtrays that look like eight balls. Um, definitely does a whole bunch of other things as well. He doesn't just do, you know, just selling pool tables and that sort of thing. He also does reclothing. Uh, he also does uh, pool table repairs, so cushions, pockets, and rails, and etc. Um, and he does all the deliveries inside the Perth metro area, and he um, even does regional. So um, yeah, if, you, if you're definitely looking for a pool table, uh, just make sure you visit uh, www.mrbilliards.com.au. Braden does uh, re-tips as well, and I'll be honest, I got Braden to re-tip my cue for me less than three weeks ago, and he done an excellent job. And I'm a fussy bugger, and he done a really good job with my tip. I think his uh, workshop's based in Malaga. Six five Steve Saxon. Thanks, Steve Saxon. Considering um, you know, he, he, he hasn't really got a lot of uh, title under his belt, but he's definitely um, you know been in the state team nine times, and he's currently uh, well, he was the current WA captain as well. So yeah, he was the Australian vice captain at World Championships this year too. That's right. I was going to say he's um, been been to the uh, the world titles. This several times now. Yeah, three, I think. I think so, yeah. Um, and he performs quite well in the state, uh, in the, in the uh, sorry, world titles for eight ball. Um, He's a very good captain, I've heard. There's a good chance he'll be W's captain this year if he yeah, goes. Yeah, we'd be definitely, um, you know, assuming that he should be the, the WA captain. If he can afford it. This is a pricey couple of weeks with no, obviously not at work. I think this is a really good competition, especially when it's just coming towards the, uh, the final end, close to the, um, the, the uh, national competition. Yeah. And then we 
should see Steve Saxon play out here on Reds. He didn't come quite far enough there. He'd be annoyed at himself. He didn't come didn't come far enough to make it really easy, but he should still finish. It's a good shot. Do you reckon he'll screw back and put the black in the bottom right, or do you reckon he'll just pot it and put the black in the middle? I think he'll just pot it. Uh, I bet if that black goes through past the yellow. I think it does. Nice. He's played that a bit hard, but he'll still put, he should still pot this. This will be uh, last, the last two breaks of Steve Saxon's or Master Breaks if he pots this. It really shows you that some of these snooker players, um, that, you know, uh, with Steve, Sack uh, Steve Saxon winning his under-21 state snooker champion twice and under-18 uh, sta uh, state snooker champion twice, um, it shows that they can make the transition to pool and, and um, yeah, he's, he definitely achieves quite a lot for pool with Steve Saxon. Um, yeah, this is the reason why this game is such a good game to watch because you've got Ron Kelly who's, you know, oh, there's so many titles that I can uh, list that he's got in the ball. Yeah, we don't have a spare of 17 hours. Exactly. <laughs> he's under the pump here, but race to 9.75. Steve will be wanting to get a bit of revenge back on Ron after, I think Ron beat him 11-4, I think it was, yesterday. Yeah, Steve definitely looks like a better player today. That's a big break as well. Look at these reds. You two will definitely go reds. The wor worst well, ball. Yeah, the one just on the top rail there. I think that's going to be hard as ready if he chooses to go reds. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think. I don't think it'll be too much of a drama. I think the black will be the biggest drama. He's gone reds. Yeah, he tried to try to get that out on that shot there. He's he's got really lucky on the on the leave. Might not be lucky enough. I think the yellow in the middle of the table between the other two yellows will go in the middle bag. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think that's yep, what he's playing. That's what he's going for. But he has closed off that yellow because before that was potable on the uh, top rail there. Mm -hmm. but now I'm he's surprised Ron. Off a bit. I'm surprised Ron didn't take that top red. To just get a bit closer, not make it such a long, hard shot. I think he's looking at the fact that it was a better, like the better timing to try and get that ball out. If, yeah. he, if he didn't pot it, he still had some other options. If he did leave himself with a harder shot, so yellows are. Um, he got quite lucky where that red, the red that he tried to break out landed, because he's covered the pocket from that other yellow now. You probably find that Steve all leave himself on to try and uh, develop the that yellow off. Um, yellow sitting just in that pocket. Yeah. If he doesn't get it, he might run the, his dead yellow down and just cover that pocket, maybe. Best option for him now. Well, he tried to break it out. He's went in off. No, he hasn't. Got lucky there. Bit of luck going for both players there. Steve Saxon's just stroking balls in for fun here. It's very yeah, relaxed. Yeah, what he's trying to, what, what ball he's going to try and get on to get on that yellow, to get that out. I think he's going to... Unless it goes, it might even go just on the angle that we're looking at. Into that it? opposite pocket. Correct. Mm. But with, the dip, with the black being tricky, I, th I think he might um, he'll just run this dead yellow down and cover the pocket, maybe. To me, that would be the smarter option, yeah. really, but... I think he's looking just in case it drops. In case it drops, he's looking at the yellow into the middle. And he'll screw back. Screw back to get the yellow in the op bottom yellow in the opposite pocket. Well, he's definitely went for the pot. He looked like he went for the pot there, didn't he? Definitely went for the pot. I think you probably find that that bottom ball does, uh, does go. Yeah. Can't be too um, too annoyed at that leave, but... No, he's probably ha he'll probably be happier with that then. <laughs> Better than it bouncing out. 
put, put Ron Kelly in a bit of a predicament. Ron's trying to cover the black there, but he's actually looked like he's probably developed a little bit more and killed his own ball, so not really the best shot by Ron. Steve will try to do something here to try and get that yellow out of a bad situation. Oh, he's went in off. That's gone in off. Two shots, Ron Kelly. Shot he played before where he killed the ball. I think that's kind of made it a little bit harder for to, to put out from here. Two shots Ron, got a bit a lot of work to do still, but I don't know what he's trying to do here. I think he got well, lucky. That's he got lucky. I think he's got the perfect little bit of angle here to um screw across and take the bottom red in I the same pocket. I'm telling you now, I'm pretty certain that's what he was going for. Yeah. There's no other reason why he'd play a shot like that. Shots to try and get out of here. And you've still got that other dead red next to the black, but but it's not too dead, you can double that. I'll say is he gonna cover something? He's just going to play this up the table and bring the white up the table as well and still try and put out maybe. Yeah. He's, he's he played it. trying to leave him on so he could put that and try and yeah. develop the red at the same time. Yeah, but he's played it way too hard. Probably fine that you'll play the red on that rail. Just run it up, put it over Snooker. the Snooker. Oh, you reckon? As well. I think I think he'll come off the other side of that red and snick it behind the black. We just snick it, snick the red. Yeah, there we go. That's a good shot. Top of the table by Saxon. I guess the way that uh, Steve's been double on the balls, you probably wouldn't want to leave him. A slight glimpse of the double on the black. He's going for it. Look at him. He's eyeing it up. He's going for it. <laughs> He's hit something. He's clipped the yellow. <laughs> Done well. Don't think it was the ball he was originally going for. But I, think, I think he was just trying to get the ball on the other one in the pocket. Yeah, he's hungry, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I can see another snooker coming up. <laughs> well, Kelly's probably gone through his head at the moment, just I like, can't leave this guy anywhere, he can just get out of it. He's in some form. This is the best I've seen Steve Saxon play. Oh, he's a brilliant player, but definitely the best I've seen him play. There's always some advantages to playing snooker, you know, you're playing on a smaller table, the angles are a lot easier to get around. 
I love playing snooker myself, but I can hardly reach any of the shots because I'm so small. That's another great, great That's weight. That's a great, great snooker. Another tap of the table. It looks like it's uh, left him no angle to try and get out there as much. Yeah. It's going to be a much harder shot than the previous one. Ron says get out of this one, then sackle. That white's up against that black. If that's cut the angle off the uh, the bottom rail there, it's going to make it very difficult. I think he's going to come off. Was he putting the red or is he coming off the cushion with tons of side? Yeah, tons of side. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, I've hit it harder. <laughs> he's actually left in not a bad position. It's, it's not a bad leave. It's not great, but we're down to how much else. Good effort by Steve. Just heard that Alan Brown beat Luke Anglesey 4 3. Is that right? Yeah, Brownie beat Angles 4 3. Adrian beat Lee again. Adrian has got the big bunny off his back again. 4-3, <laughs> they like the tight games. He played Lee. Adrian played Lee in the first round yesterday and beat him 11-10. Before that, Adrian had never beaten Lee in about seven years. <laughs> Very poor shot by Ron. I think Ron's going to try and get some composure back if he's going to try and get back up and win this frame. I can hear Angles soaking about losing 4 3 to Alan Brown. That's the type of shot that I was talking about there. You know, leaves, leaves Saxon back in the game again. Yeah. That's, that's also not a very good shot from Steve Saxon. Really, few um, really poor shots. Last few few shots. The pressure's got to be still. I'm not on pressure, but so much the the concentration level's going to be a lot higher now than it's been in throughout all the other games. That's a great shot. You just you just um, roll this into the middle, and the white will naturally come up. Perfect for the black. Yes. Got a bit of a cut here. I should have played that harder. Ron will be praying he misses this because th this will put Steve on the hill. Yeah, he's nailed it. He's playing too well. He's playing well. Ron will be kicking himself, but that, he had two shots and really bad position. What Not like he, him. Uh, I think uh, uh, he might be a bit feeling a bit tired, or I don't know what it is, but it's definitely not Rod's normal game. Yeah. Here's Lee Fair. He just got knocked out of uh, the consolation clip by Adrian. So. The uh, tables have turned. Uh, Lee, Adrian never used to be, be able to beat Lee, and now now Lee can't beat Adrian. No, I'm trying to juice him up, ready for another money match against him. Actually, I think it's about his turn again. <laughs> Lee loves the money matches. Yeah, well now the Clint's won you some money. I think we're, we're about set, aren't we? Yeah. He's obviously heard the rumours that Clint's won me money, and uh, I'll probably challenge Lee to a money match. Uh, Steve can get a board, you know? I think the way they've been playing, you could go out. Yeah, I would too, you're a gun. <laughs> <laughs> 
Steve Saxon on the hill here, the race to nine, eight five up. Winner plays Luke Foster for it. and then the winner of that will play Clint, Clint Kapler in the final. I think um Steve Saxon if you look for if Steve Saxon wins this it'll be a cracking match against Luke Foster because Sacco is playing playing very well. Steve Sachs will be um, looking to pot out here and wrap this game up. Send Ron Kelly home. It's definitely there on the reds, isn't it? Definitely. On reds, it'll be the third master break in as many breaks for Steve Saxon. Just shows you how well he's playing. Shows you how well he's breaking, anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just composed. He definitely looks a lot more composed than what. Uh, relaxed, isn't he? Very relaxed. Yeah, he's just. He's definitely a man on a mission. For any that don't know, Steve Ducamp won the best intermediate player for the weekend. Um, picking up a thousand dollars, is that right? That's right, definitely a well deserved uh, for Steve. Yeah, he would have been up there in the top five favourites probably for the intermediate, maybe. Yeah, just. It was um, quite a bit of luck in the draw as well, but it depends who you get in the first few rounds, you know. He came ninth for the comp, so yeah. out of 32 players, it's a very, very good finish. Brilliant. There's definitely no easy run in this comp. Nah, that's for sure. Oh ho. Oh ho. How much money would you put on Ron Kelly winning this 9 8? With the way that Steve's been playing, well, I definitely wouldn't put any money on it. <laughs> Yeah, well. But if someone was going to do it, it'd definitely be Ron Kelly. He'll win this for him. 8 6, break and pot out. 8 7, pressure on. Oh, well, look, yeah, it's, def it's definitely doable. It's definitely ne ne you can never say that he's out of the game. <laughs> but I think this Steve's a little bit more. Yeah, you know, it looks a lot more relaxed. And, oh, Ron's not playing well. Ron's not playing well. Missing chances. Shots like that that I'm talking about, you know. They, they yeah, I think he needs to take the risk factor away until he catches up, you know. He's playing risky shots. Feel a snicker coming up here. Looks like he might have actually left uh, Steve with a pole on the red. Down the bottom? Top? I do believe so. But don't be wrong, it's a hard shot, but... Yeah, it looks from here, it looks like uh, it's potable. I don't know if Steve would go for it, though, because he's not going to have much on the red after it comes off it. If you play it hard enough, the white should come off the, the top rail and bounce back up and you could yeah, get that red in the middle. Over a ball. Does that bother Steve Saxon? I think it'll bother anybody. No, he's played it softly just to get it over there. Oh, he's, he's played it quite poorly, to be honest. He's killed it, half killed it. I'd expect Ron to pot out from here, but he's not been playing the best, so we'll see. All the balls are out and open for Ron.
In the consolation plate, um, Adrian and Alan Brown are going to play in the semi-final. And Nathan McMahon's in the other semi-final against the winner of oh, against the right. winner of Rocky and Stone Stenhouse. Stay Saxon here just for the pot. Oh, he's missed it. Ron, Ron, Steve cannot give you any more chances, mate. <laughs> 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 you think Ron would capitalise by now, but he's still, still letting Steve uh, back in there. He's chittering around like an old goose, isn't he? think that uh, Ron should pot out from here, but can't really expect much, can you, John? That's a beautiful shot. That puts Ron back into it. Eight six. Really bad miss by Steve Saxon there. Hopefully that hasn't rattled him too much. He might live to regret that. But it might have been enough to rattle him that, you know, like you said, Ron Kelly can come back nine eight. It's six, Steve Saxon. He only needs one more. Ron Kelly just about to break. The winner of this match will take on Luke Foster to try and get into the grand final. He's come up dry. No, he hasn't. He's put a red. Kelly looking to go out on reds. Ron just seems to be getting out of position a lot with a lot of the balls he's playing. Yeah, like just, just like a yeah. tiny bit. It's definitely not the best I've seen Ron play. No, but he's, if he wins this, he's right back in it. He's on this quite nicely, and the white will come off the cushion and back out to the open for him to go for the out. <laughs> He's missed it. Still not a bad shot. <laughs> good, 
Goodbye to Steve Ducamp, the thousand dollar winner of the intermediates. He should be disappointed about losing to Simon Gray in his money match. Yeah, yeah. He still walks away with uh, 500 bucks at least for, <laughs> for the weekend. Both players weren't very happy with the way they were playing. Apparently they said it was really scrappy, poor pull. And Simon script over the line 11-8 or 11-9 is it? I think it was 11-8. 11-8. But they both said they were playing terrible. Simon Gray has been in good form but... Looks like Steve's going to go for the out here. Do you think he'll try and develop that yellow or double it? I, I believe it or not, I think he'll double it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he should go for the double. <laughs> he might not, but... He has left angle on this to try and develop it, though. Yeah, but even if he develop it, I think he's going to go up closer to the pocket where the red is. So he's going to have to get quite lucky to develop it properly. Oh, he's going to leave himself with a long rail. <laughs> no, I think he's still, he's still going to go for the double. Just, just um, stroke this in. Now he's, now he's playing over the black. It definitely makes the pull a lot harder. Yeah, definitely a bit of a poor shot, but arching over the black. You just you, you just want to concentrate on the pot on this. Don't even worry about the next ball because just you, you're going to leave yourself on the double, you know. Just make sure you pot this, Steve. He's nailed it. Oh, he's nailed it. Left himself on the double. He hasn't missed one yet today. Bit of pressure on this one. He knows if he makes this, he's, uh, he should. If he hits it with pace, the white should naturally come round for the black. He's missed oh, it, he's and he's potted the red as well. He's How the luck to has turned for Ron Kelly? <laughs> Saxon gives the grumpy frown and death stare to everybody. <laughs> Two shots to Ron Kelly. He's, Ron Kelly's blessed, to be honest. <laughs> It's always a risk when you try to go for a uh, <laughs> big out there. It's a beautiful shot by Ron. You've got the same pocket again. <laughs> Bit more pace so the white comes out for the red. Played it well. That's a beautiful shot. Still got two shots. Confident on that, they've had every chance to hit that black. And do you think he'll play this with a bit of screw and pace, or do you think he'll just make sure he pots it? Still got two. But he's got two shots, so. Tucks in the shirt, shows off his wife's belt again. He's done well, played it really well. Beautiful shot. Still got two shots, he'll just stroke us in. This is the one we normally see. Stroke this Very in. Very confident, nice flowing. Eight seven, and we're now at eight seven. He got lucky, to be honest. Sometimes well, that's, you need, you that's need pool. I'm like, you know, if, if if you miss a shot, you got the chance of winning, especially when you're playing these top guys. Mm. You know, it's all about whoever makes the mistake, and Steve made the mistake, so you know, there's definitely no luck about it. I'm like, that's just pull. Kelly definitely uh, capitalised on the mistake that Steve Saxon made. <laughs> Another good break by Steve Saxon.
Things on reds here. Steve's starting to feel a little bit of pressure now that he's uh, dropped a couple of games and is at 7 8. Just needs to get composed again. Steve's missed that. No, and it's went, a huge it's went in quite a bad spot for him, too. Yellows aren't the greatest, but. <laughs> Yellows really aren't aren't the greatest yet. The semi-finals of the consolation plates just about to start, which is um, Alan Brown v Adrian, a couple of golden oldies there, and Nathan McMahon v Stone Stenhouse. A couple of young'uns there. <laughs> Stone has knocked out Dicko and Rocky so far in this, which is huge, and Mike Ballum, huge by Stone Stenhouse. Don't you agree, Marchie? Well, that's the reason why he's, you know, Mate, he's probably one of the better juniors in uh, in the state, you know, uh, for the under 18s. Yeah. And the juniors is where uh, the official know, competition's all about, so yeah. it's definitely good for WA having someone like Stone coming through the ranks. Considering you look at um, how old well some of the guys are in the uh, top level of this competition and in the finals, a lot of them are pretty much the young guns. <laughs> Cap Kapler's 24, 25, and Angles, oh he's not in it, and Luke Foster's what, 21? 20. Uh, 20 I think he is, yep, 20. Sacco's 40. Ron Kelly's 33, so... <laughs> Steve's actually got a bit of an opportunity here. Super Saxon. You can try and get that red in behind the yellow. <laughs> I think he's come a bit far, but he should still be able to cut that over there. Might knock the yellow out of the way and take the pocket. Hopefully, it, for his um, his sake, it doesn't, doesn't his. drop in. It would be better if it doesn't, probably. <laughs> Like I said in that in a couple of frames ago where he uh, rattled that uh, red in the middle, you know, he's um, been shaken up a little bit after that miss mm. where he should have taken the, uh, the gap match here. He hasn't played it well, hasn't played it well. Look at the leave, but he's got pretty lucky with the leave. Ron, um, I don't know if it's touching ball. trying to see what the signal was but I did I missed he, it. He said something, I don't know if it was not touching or touching. Touching. Is he playing a safety here, is he? <laughs> yeah, definitely must have been touching. I was trying to work out if it was touching or not. I don't know if that red can get in behind that yellow. I don't think so. It's a bit hard on this on this angle to look at. It looks like <laughs> it from the computer, but I don't. He wouldn't. Have played, I don't think he would have played that shot if he if the red would. Well, Steve's looking at it. Yeah, see, I think it does, but um. From where the white is now, it's like really quite a thin cut, isn't it? Let's see if Steve's got his composure back. That's the ball he's going to play. 
going to have to play it well. Oh, huge shot. Well. Huge shot. I don't think Ron looked at that. thing for Steve is that there's still a bit of an edge of that, that red too. So at least he can pot it if he uh, to gets an opportunity to. I don't know what Ron's going to do here to go off. I think he's a bit bamboozled. You just really wanted to use that word, didn't you, John? <laughs> <laughs> Especially with your Scottish accent, yeah. it's uh, viewers will love it. Quite, quite a weird word for you to say. Bamboozled. Yeah, you just said it again. I could surprise me. <laughs> 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 He's trying to get inside. Right. He tried to, he tried to play a shot there, so Saka could only, only see the bottom red. Yeah, but he hasn't hit it hard enough. He hasn't played it well at all. He's yeah, he played it all wrong, really, but that's what he was trying to do. So Saka had to pot that red down the bottom, but the finish is on now. He's got protection with that red covering the bottom bag and the yellow over it. He's, he's even left him on angle on that red. I didn't yeah, think he had angle on it. Yeah, he got it all wrong. <coughs> What's the end off here? Oh, he's left. No, that's all right. That's not a bad shot. He's still giving Ron Kelly an option to put that, that yellow in behind it. Ron's got a lot of work to do, but especially that yellow down the bottom. It's just, just got to play like a mongoose. Test of Ron's judo. Cues has definitely enjoyed the competition this weekend. Cover the black there. A bit hard to see, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Steve's part of the way in the corner. Oh, 
and we're back. <laughs> uh, he's gone in off there. Ron Kelly a sniff of hope. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> It'll be a huge, huge comeback if Ron Kelly can get up to in this honest, match. It's not Ron that's done it, but it's Steve's making mistakes the last three frames. Running off and missing easy finish. That's right, but you know that that's the thing with Paul, you know, you've got to keep your composure through the whole game, not just uh, for the first half. <laughs> Braden Descends has just walked in, the owner of Mr. Billiards, one of the major sponsors. Here for all your pool tables, keys and accessories needs. that out beautifully. Oh, almost beautifully. He's given himself a chance at least. <laughs> I can feel a snooker coming. I think he'll play the, the yellow at the very end of the table and snooker. What do you think, Mark? No? Oh, no. I don't know. I think, I think uh, he might actually just sit there and decide to go for the out. I think he said pop balls win games. That's it. He's gonna, I think he, is he gonna take this yellow down and take this yellow down and punch the red out of um, re red out of the pocket? Well, I just didn't think there'd be that much need for it, but he looks like he is looking for it. I'd be leaving that till the black ball, to be honest. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely doing it. Oh, beautiful! It's definitely a beautiful shot. Definitely making a le a less sort of mistakes in the last yes. few frames. He's letting Steve do this mistakes. He didn't. He, he got lucky there. He didn't. He didn't mean to cannon into that. He meant to come down for the bottom yellow. Yeah, but he's got a self-perfect angle. I don't know if that's luck or if that was uh, no, no, what he meant to go. I've just um, become Matt Bolton by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah. Your game's improved immediately. <laughs> <laughs> your game has Im immediately improved. Or Matt Bolton's has immediately decreased, yeah. one or the other. <laughs> oh, there I am. Yeah. <laughs> I think he must, be a, he must be dead straight, eh? Yeah, he definitely doesn't look um, sure of the shot. I think he's dead straight and he wanted to get closer to the black. He might screw it back, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Bit off the top throw it. No, he's just gone for a snooker. Definitely wasn't sure of the shot. It's a good snooker. I think Steve's going to try and sneak her in back yeah, on that red. Yeah, you're right. Off the two cushions. Oh no, he's went for the pot. Oh, maybe you just go for the pot instead. He's <laughs> killed the red too. Steve Saxon is playing very well, but 
He's killed his red a little bit here. Ron has to go for it now. Especially with the dead red, even if he misses. I'd, I'd say that's probably a little bit more of a, a snooker mentality there, trying to go for the win there straight away. <laughs> I think he's still maybe angry at himself from going off, you know. Great shot by Ron. That was a great shot by Ron. Yes. It all. Steve won't be happy with himself again, going in off when he was in control of the game. He had the bottom pocket well, with, um, <laughs> with Ron's Steve's ball. Steve's had his opportunities the whole last two frames. Steve, Steve should have given him back. Game. On to break the final frame. I mean, if, if Ron goes out from here, Steve will absolutely be annoyed at himself for missing Definitely. that red into the middle pocket, leaving himself oh, on the black. Yeah, he's probably had two frames. That he was, just went that in was off when he didn't need to as well. And oh, the, the biggest opportunity for him was that uh, that red in the middle pocket. Yeah. And like I said to you, oh, mate, as soon as I saw that, um, he missed that. Oh, mate, it's rattled him. So when you asked me, you know, would I put money that Ron, Ron would get back in? Yeah. I didn't want to take it, but as soon as I saw Steve miss that pot, I knew that would rattle him. Because I guarantee you it's still thinking about it. Yeah, Ron <laughs> has got lucky in the last few frames, but... He'll definitely be going for the pot out here. Does the yellow next to the red go in the middle or not? I don't think I don't it goes in the middle, but he, he can get position to try and cut it across. It'd be a huge pot to do it, but... He'll probably go to try and leave himself some uh, angle on it to try and do it. Or I'll be wrong. Has he left, <laughs> left himself angle here or not? I don't think so. It's going the wrong way, isn't it? Well, I thought he would have tried to leave himself angle on that shot there, but... We just heard that Ron Kelly doesn't need angle. <laughs> That's because he's a sorcerer. That's <laughs> I think, um... The yellow closest to the white goes past the black, eh? It definitely goes past the black, yeah. yeah. Well, it's more on how is he going to try and get that yellow out. I thought he would have tried to leave himself a bit more angled towards the yellow, but... Well, again, he showed us. <laughs> That's a good shot. Ron Kelly, it's official. Ron Kelly does not need angle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that yellow was passed by. That yellow, this yellow here doesn't go past that, right? Well, as we just seen then, uh, the screen definitely deceives us a bit. I think he's going to have to cut it down into the bottom right pocket. Unless he goes the other one past the black. Well, that's what I was thinking. He's probably looking at the two options there. 
which one's a higher percentage shot for him. I think he goes one past the black. No, he's not. He's got another one. He's going to cut it into the corner by the looks of it. You better watch where the white's going. Wow, that is a huge hit. It's a big hit, but he's going to have to go for the double here. Is he? I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ended up uh, 20th on the state trial list, mate. Why are you asking me for? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's going to cut it to the corner to pass the black. Very much the white. He must have extra left on it. All right. Oh, oh, he missed the double by a mile. He did go the double. He's did he? Steve, Steve Are you a sure? chance. Missed it by a mile. <laughs> Steve will snooker. Maybe you're thinking cut at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I do see a sneaker coming on here. Yeah. A sneaker. Develop one of his bad balls. I just missed what happened. <laughs> Ron got out of the snooker and killed one of um, Sacco's balls, but kind of killed his own yellow. Another snooker. Well, another attempted snooker. He didn't get it, I don't think. Steve does, uh, definitely doesn't look as composed as he did yeah. three he's, frames ago. He was so relaxed before. He was just but doing, ma doing the markers, doubles, and all sorts. Now he can't even snooker. He actually to the point where I'd say he's even rushing a little bit into each shot. Steve Saxon's rushing? <laughs> I guess my Asian accent, my apologies there, John. <laughs> For you people listening at home, Steve Saxon is not Russian. I don't think. <laughs> I don't know the guy that well. What's Ronnie going to do here? Well, if he hits it too hard, he's going to get the red out. Oh. oh. That's a very bad shot from Ron. Sacco says good shot, mate. shot by Steve there. He was trying to go for the cover of the pocket. But I, can't, I think he was in two minds in that shot. <laughs> I don't know. But Ron has, can definitely cut this in now. Ron can definitely cut that in now. He's, he's got um, Steve's red. Even if he doesn't get it for, cut it far, far enough back, he'll hit the red and it'll still go towards the pocket. Did you want to take that bet on the uh, Ron Kelly coming back? <laughs> that was my bet, mate. <laughs> For a pot to, to go into the uh, chance to get in the grand final what? against Luke Foster. Has he got control of the white or is it too thin to have control of the white? He's got no control of the white and the black has. Perfect. Come on. And that's Ron Kelly, 9 8, since Steve Saxon. Well done, Ron Kelly. A lot of luck on his side there. I think. My gut feeling is Ron Kelly's going to really you turn it on in the next in the next round. You, you call it luck, but I call it just being more professional about his um, composure. And you know, he, he kept his head in there the whole time. Yeah. He didn't panic, and um, you know, Steve basically he got, didn't play got well. rattled a bit. He didn't play well. 
He did in the last three frames. He capitalised when uh, Steve made the mistakes. And I'm, I'm guessing Steve Saxon bought Ron Kelly in the Calcutta. <laughs> <laughs> you could almost say that, couldn't you? <laughs> Next game up will be Luke Foster v Ron Kelly. Winner to go into the grand final against Clint Kapler. Pardon? Sorry, Tanya's trying to stop me, but she's uh, she's a drunk. Okay. Thank you. 